the smartest dumb person in the room. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. The church is an amendment to change the Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling the friend. We love that about you, right, Gina Grant? That's right. Handball, Brian. Look at these assholes. Uh, Look at them. Yeah. Get a life. Orny Adams. I recognize that voice anywhere. So he'll be in. He always brings it. That's what I love about him. I went down to the Country Mart in Malibu on Sunday to um, say farewell to the Country Mart, which uh, was the away. host. I don't even know if I'm saying it right, but uh, there's a little uh, bodego uh, shop, uh, desserts and coffee oh. and uh, and they uh, cold cuts and mm-hmm. sandwiches and it's. The cars and coffee guys would hang out there, there on a go. Sunday. Didn't Phil Rosenthal feature that place on one of his previous iterations of his show? I would not doubt it if. And they if named he did. a sandwich after him. I think it's a little. Yeah. It's a little walk-in yeah. shack almost. Yeah. And it's a real solid sandwich shop. Yeah. Well, they lost their lease, Aww. so they're they're moving on. The and, the the Richies in the neighborhood can't help him out. I do not know what the story is, but they were doing their last uh, cars and coffee oh, over there, shit. and I was in Malibu, so I thought I'd swing by, and um, the great Jay Leno was there, and so I thought I would catch you guys up on Please. that. Um, I'm so glad I went once. Leno was there, and uh, Spike Ferriston was there, who's... Um, Let's see. Uh, oh, you know him from Spikes. I don't know. He's one of these guys. Just uh, you know was him he, from Seinfeld. Guy? Yeah, show. he was a Seinfeld writer. He's a Seinfeld guy. Did he have a short-lived talk show? Yes, and he's still a Seinfeld guy. And they just finished the Pop Tart movie for oh. Netflix or mm-hmm. wherever it's going to mm-hmm. be, and um, he's putting the finishing touches on that. And awesome. So they were going to be down there. So uh, I went down there and. It, there is something miraculous and insane going on. So uh, I sat with Jay. We sat inside. We did Spike's podcast. And I sat two feet away from the man. And I was fixated on his face, of course. Um, and he looks newer than he did before the accident. because <laughs> I, I can explain that. He's had a peel. Exactly. <laughs> multiple peels. Lots That's of peels. Exactly what I was a lot of layers say. came off. A yeah. lot of layers. Yep, and yep. a lot of years came uh-huh. off. And... Baby new cell, cells and, rejuvenating. And I, and I just kept looking at his face going, he looks so spry and so yeah. new. And, and he, at some point, he pulled his phone out and he started scrolling through pictures of him in the hospital. Mm-hmm. And the pictures he was showing me were gruesome. Um, Pussy. It, it, it was during a procedure where there was a sort of... Uh, Looked like one of those hand rolled stippler things that people do on dough, uh-huh. or they they they, they For do the pie crust. They do the pie crust yes. with was a little wider and probably a little more sterile. It was like <laughs> being run over his face. He's like that. That's taking layers of skin off. He's I mean, showing me these bloody, grotesque, hard to look at pictures, which include his ear, which looked mangled. And it, 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 it looked as if... I have a pastrami sandwich here for Corolla. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, Mr. Corolla, your pastrami sandwich I, is ready. I, uh, yes, my uh, roast beef rare is you. what I was looking at oh. on Jay's face. And he said, this is 10 days old. Wow. And I was like, I, I, it, there wasn't a scab on his face like you might get if you nicked yourself right. shaving. There was nothing... On his, there's nothing on his ears. There's nothing on his chin or his face or his neck. There's no redness. There was no discoloration. It was pristine. And these pictures he was showing me looked like someone's head went through a windshield of a car, and the CHP photographed it. You know, yeah. it was a it was a crime scene. His his face in the pictures he was I showing have roast me. Beef raw, <laughs> there roast we beef go. For Mr. Corolla. We call it rare, but all right. <laughs> No, so, this is a this, this is rare. This is rare. Rough cow. It was is the Tartar. pictures he was showing me looked like a mafia hit where they were sending a message. <laughs> 
<laughs> not <laughs> just that? a hit, but message. Yeah. You can't being have an open said. casket. I, I didn't. I couldn't imagine what to do with it. Now I, I, I was just. I was staring at his newborn face. <laughs> I, if you would told me it was six months ago, I would have went. This is miraculous. Yeah. The fact that it it had not been two weeks. I don't know. I mean, maybe Ben, you can do the math. But I mean, he was getting these procedures the following day, the day after that. I, is it the hyperbaric yes. chamber yes. that is doing it? Wow. That's for burns. Brand fucking new. Also made me think of like, man, uh, never been a better time to be burnt. <laughs> because in the past, you just walked, you know, yeah. you would. What was that movie with uh, Mel Gibson where he had like half a face? It was all Yeah, it's like out. the Vietnam vet. Who had half, half a face. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, was I, really? I, I remember that he lived yeah. in a cabin. They called him like befriended, hamburger head. Befriended a boy. Yeah. Yeah. So Jay looked brand new. Can that be right? Um, he he volunteered. He'll he'll come on the show and tell us all about that it. That would be amazing. Um, the um, it's been three weeks after the accident, so less than three weeks ago are and these he, are these pictures he when looks, he's showing them to me. He looks better than he did before the accident. I you I, you can zoom up on the picture we took. It, it, he looks new. Yeah, the man Between, without a face. There you go. I wasn't that far off. Between the massive, massive skin peel and I imagine ha- daily hyperbaric chamber, the man looks incredible. Yeah, so uh, absolutely unbelievable. And like I said, the pictures wow. he was showing of me Jesus. were a gory mess. He's brand new, smooth as a baby's. Butt. Hard to look at. Yeah, mess. So uh, I hope you told him that he'll come in. He knew. I, he knew. I mean, he wanted to get the reaction. I, I gave him, I gave him the reaction. We should have him in, and we'll give you at the same time pictures of his mangled face the day after the accident and my wound openings for my oh, breast no. reduction. And yeah. you say which one is harder to eat a lasagna in front of? Uh, okay, because I have a lot of lasagna same. tests. <laughs> Yeah, that's now, why I always say jokes on you if you steal my phone. You do not want to see what's in here. I don't think he wants to share. He'll sh- he'll show you guys internally. the pictures. I internally yeah. he will he will show those and and also he is doing his sit down with people and whatever that is. That's basically yesterday. Nice. So um, he said I'm done with that. I'll I'll come on in. Great. So uh, we'll, he'll he'll be coming in shortly and he'll he'll walk us through it. But that was a uh, nice to see him. Good mood, good guys, good cars, blah, blah, blah. All right. Um, another instance of uh, a guy chucking a football to fence that everyone tweeted me, oh, yeah. and I just turned on the highlights and saw it. I think it was one of your own chiefs. Oh, no. Did they this. should know better. This time, this guy just chucked it at a dude who was just standing <laughs> there, and the guy to duck will uh, we'll show it. Oh, I mean, like, that was me. That, that was uncalled the, the, for. If that ball hits him in the face, you look like Jay Leno right after, right after that. I, that was that ball cool. hits you in the face. You have a, a broken nose on a good day. If that hits him in the face, that guy's suspended for multiple games. Right? Yeah. Oh, uh, not only that, but I, I, I think the guy, the multi-million dollar athlete who threw the ball. If that whacks you in the head and breaks your nose, you've got a several million dollar yeah, lawsuit working, working there. I don't know how well uh, the Chiefs are insured, but... <laughs> also, I, that was not far away from the referee, if you look at where he was. Yeah. Like, the ref... The ref, is- the ref signals the touchdown and then has to put his hands down and duck because there's a ball. They got to stop that. I, I'm not into the... Yeah, I don't like big government, but there's going to have to be a rule. And I, I, I saw it later. I was I, I, all you do is watch the highlights, and you'll see three a week after the guy scores the touchdown. Well, and you, I mean, this isn't even a rule for the players. This is a rule. The players, please don't attack the people watching the game. Well, at a certain point, it starts to bleed into hate crime yeah. territory. It's like there's a guy standing there. I don't know if he's working with the camera crew. I don't know if he's a ball guy or I. I who knows what he's doing? He's just standing there, and you just chucked a ball in his head. It's, it's assault, if that hits his face. Absolutely. I'm <laughs> totally. just saying. Uh, spike it, or do my move. I I miss, I don't see it nearly as much, uh, the dunk over the goalpost. Oh. Yeah. The, the crossbar. They used to get in the, in the crossbar, 
by the way, is 10, 10 feet, feet off the ground, the same as, as a basketball mm-hmm. hoop. So when Tony Gonzalez would do the dunk, you'd go, oh, cool. that guy's a hoops there yeah. because he's in full pads. Right. He's just played three and a half quarters and he's dunking. <laughs> off the top of my head, I think that's Jarek McKinnon. I think he's all diminutive. I don't know if he's uh, dunk material yeah, or, or layer way. material. Did yeah, you they'll see... do the finger roll, a yeah, exactly. little bit of a cop out. <laughs> did you see, uh, I, I tweet. I think I tweeted you on it. Um, they did the thing that like the soccer player do with the whole like choreographed he pretended to bowl and then they all went down like pins and there was one wobbly, wobbly. pin that was, <laughs> yes. one. That was the awesome. one wobbly pin was solid that was great i don't know but that may have originated with oliver stones on any given sunday they oh. did those kinds of celebrations right. oh. in that movie they did a lot of guys lining up a guy had a machine gun tat, 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 tat. they all like fell over yep. they in the NFL, there wasn't the big group choreographed yeah, celebration. That, that was illegal for a number of years. That movie but, came but about, and I've seen a lot more of it l- lately. Yeah. Do they ever do like Rockettes style, like kick lines? Cheer, please. They'll they'll do some pretty choreographed okay, dancing yeah. and things like that. Yeah. All right. So an, another, I this shall be addressed. Yes, it, it shall to. be addressed. It'll be addressed like every other thing I complain about. It'll take a number of years, and unfortunately. Some cable guy, the guy holds the spool of cable and runs behind. Somebody's going to have their orbital socket Mm. smashed. And then somebody, then people will be outraged. Right. And then we will make a move. I actually know how we could get this solved today. Mm -hmm. No place. Just say it's racist. Oh, Oh, Start screaming at it real quick. Yeah, but you can't. That's a black man. Black man can't be racist throwing at a white guy. All right. Um... Did you do a bit of entertaining this weekend, or did my eyes deceive me? I went to Patrick Warburton's house. He threw a party. Uh, Patrick uh, Warburton is one of those guys you'd recognize. You'd recognize his face, and you'd recognize his voice from just about everything. Greatest dude in the world. Just you, you wouldn't know it if you saw a sort of on-screen persona. Laid back, super chill, a yeah. l- little bit crunchy, got a cool, cool vibe, lives way off the beaten path. Him and his wife, who he met in like high school, nice. tell me all about their travel plans. He and, was 40, Gina. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he taught at the high school. I Did I it. not say that? No, you didn't mention it. Yeah, she was a ninth grader. <laughs> he taught driving. <laughs> um, so... He's uh, he he sets up the karaoke and he's got this whole group from his play and everyone is there and they're doing show tunes and they're doing Disney tunes. But uh, not you, not me. I I, I had a few drinks, uh, hung out for a while and then decided it was time to claim my rightful place in front of the microphone with a uh, special no self-esteem, everyone. Pretty (laughs) shitty. Pretty shitty YouTube version of a vehicle. Wasn't a good, I guess there's good karaoke, you know, big horns sure. and guitar, and there's sort of tinny computer generated ones, but uh, I'll play it for you. Blue Eyes Soul. Right uh, I've never it. seen such soul. Oh, I, I think you. Patrick's on the guitar Get here. <laughs> oh, a little air guitar? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Warburton playing air guitar. Catch your breath, take a sip. Well, I'm the friend that trains you in the black sedan. Would you hop inside my car? I got pictures, candy, I'm the local man, and I'll take you to the nearest star. Oh my god. Any dropper. He telegraphs it. <laughs> you know I love you. Need you. Want you. Got the happy job. Great God in the 
heaven, you know I love <laughs> I learned. I, I stole that from Elvis. Yeah, right. I gotta be. I gotta be honest with you. That is a perfect song for you. Speaking of vehicle, that's yeah. a great vehicle to for take you. Take this in the spirit which is intended. There are there are karaoke songs that if you don't sing really well, mm. it will go very badly. You try to pull off "I Will Always Love oh, You" please. and you're a very bad singer, or even yeah. an okay singer. Yeah. It's not gonna go well. Songs like this, let it rip, man. Yeah, and rip he did. Yeah, it was a uh, fun, fun night. Uh, War Burton is, uh, and his wife are a, a, a delight uh, telling me about uh, getting ready to go on a 20-day cruise, oh, go everywhere, see everything. And it's like, I don't know how some people figured out their life, but... Uh, 20 day cruise. It's awesome. Do they say where it goes? Is it a European cruise? Is Everywhere. It a... In a circle around Tijuana. Oh, that just, it just drifts. <laughs> but it's still 20 days. Yeah. It's 20 yeah, days. Technically. It's more of a barge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, 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 you know, I talked to Drew about his. We fly into oh, Spain oh. and then we go to Morocco. They go to Lisbon. And then we go to, they I, go to oh, Morocco. It's like this, this world that I've, I, I sit home and struggle over. Should I pay four ninety nine for a pay per view movie right. that I only get for forty eight hours? Right. Like that's a forty eight hours, yeah. man. What if I don't watch the whole? Like that's that's my big. That's money gone. That's money gone. Yeah, think about that. You know the kind yes. of cruise I'm dying to take, and I think it's because I've reached a certain age. Mm. I'm dying to take one of those elderly person river cruises down like the the fjords Mm -hmm. so i think that's where i'm at now as opposed to like a a party cruise i want like the little steamboat cruise down the fjords i uh anything sounds and and also i'll talk to patrick about it when he comes back but uh drew's like you you get out of the country for two weeks you get a full reset full reset on all the sort of Mm -hmm. craziness that is the united states now um all right speaking of songs I was thinking about these old songs. We've gone over them here before, but from my childhood, we used to have songs where we changed the lyrics, and the lyrics fell into one of two categories, rape or killing your teacher. Jesus. Those were, that's all we had. We had ta ra ra boom die I'll take your pants away. And while you're standing there, I'll take your underwear. Oh, boy. We had he meditated. We had, of course, the Beverly Hillbillies. Oh. Let me tell you a story about a man named Jed. Took his Aunt Ellie, threw her on the bed, pulled down a zipper. Out came a worm. Out from the worm came a bubbling sperm. See, and we then- never heard that version. It was, it was um, the next thing you know, old Jed was in bed. Humping and pumping till his balls turn red. <laughs> so bad. Granny came in with a ten foot pole, stuck it up his little hole. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, right, like urethra. Yeah, that's a little hole. Yeah. Oh, maybe his ass. Probably his ass. He was right? pumping like on her, sense. and she came oh, in. Maybe. Yeah, Makes for so, sure. Yeah. It depends what region of the country you're in. So yeah, he threw his Aunt Ellie, threw her on the bed. <laughs> he took Aunt Ellie, threw her on the bed, bubbling sperm. Yeah. Uh, five months later, to Jed's surprise, Aunt Ellie. Ellie's belly began to rise. Oh. Ellie just thought it was a bunch of bubber, uh, sorry, blubber, but Uncle Jed forgot to use his rubber. Sure. That was ours. Interesting that it yeah. changed regionally. Yeah. So there was a. There, <laughs> that is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> there was a ta ra ra. I wonder whose is better. Give us your. Next us, thing you know, old Jed was in bed, humping and pumping till his ball turned red. Granny came in with a little hole. A, a bit, granny came in with a 10 foot pole, stuck it up his little hole. Hole that is thick grease and slimy yellow. Mm. Oh, there was more, huh? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So the place in France where the naked ladies dance yeah. fall under this. The category? men walk around with their pants. I, don't know, I, don't yeah, know. I guess it's kind the, of ours were a little more aggressive. Yeah. Ours had to do with throwing people on the floor yeah. and having sex, violent right. sex with them. You're right, actually. And yeah. then there was, um, then there was uh, glory, glory, hallelujah. Teacher hit me with a ruler, hid behind the door with a loaded forty-four, Jesus, and the teacher no don't teach teacher no more. more. Yeah. Oh, wow. Glory, I don't think glory, glory to the burning of the school. We have oh, tortured yeah. every teacher. We have broken every rule. <laughs> That's right. Day after class, we're going to hang the principal, and the cops are after us. Yes. I don't think you that song these yeah, days. Yeah, let's keep that well, one to a dull roar. Isn't there another ta ra boom dee where they take the teacher and throw her in a lake? Yeah, that one goes, ta ra boom dee our teacher passed 
away. We threw her in the bay. She scared the fish away. <laughs> Not only do we kill her, she's ugly. So here's what I would say if I was in front of Congress and AOC was uh, trying to challenge me. I would say, I grew up strictly songs about rape and homicide. Mm-hmm. Every third song was about killing a teacher. No school shootings. Right. True. So I know we're always talking about taking these evil messages mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. putting them into the heads of young kids. That's all I knew was songs about shooting teachers, yeah. but it didn't, with all the songs, it didn't exist. Now, right. today you couldn't sing that song because they would say that will lead to yeah. something, but right. it never led to anything no. back then. Well, that was like pressure valve it released, you yes. know, whatever was building yeah. up. There was another Tarara Boomdie, I think, where they took the girl behind the shed and gave her 50 cents. And, like, oh boy, I mean, there was some. Got excused us because he's always eating back there, so it's a that's a swallow. But now that one I, I kind of remember from memory. It was boom I met a girl today. I gave her fifty cents to go behind the fence. Yeah. And, oh, and then this one is from the girl's perspective. Oh. He said it wouldn't hurt and pushed it in my skirt. <laughs> my mommy was surprised to see my belly rise. <laughs> I, I was thinking about this. Uh, also, we didn't have... These are PSAs. Yeah, for they sure. They didn't have any form of sex ed when I was in That's the fifth was sure grade. Well, <laughs> that was we it. had a spoken word, like like the Indians would do with the elders right. around the campfire. Yeah. This was just for rape. And by the way, we, there, there's no suggestion of these women were of age. You know what I mean? These oh, no. were, we're They're talking definitely about, minors. We're talking about 10-year-old girls, yeah. Yeah. This, this song's about. And that's wow. that's what we had. Wow. And yes. Did does Miss Susie have a had a steamboat fall into this category? I'd have to hear. Miss Susie it. had a steamboat. The steamboat uh, had a bell. Miss Susie went to heaven. The steamboat went to hello, hello operator. operator. Please give me <laughs> number nine. nine. And if you disconnect me, I'll take oh, you from behind, behind the refrigerator. refrigerator. There, there was, was a piece of glass. Miss Susie, Susie sat upon it, and it went right up her ass. We know her question. Yeah, I love those. Tell one of our lives. Yeah, the boys are in the bathroom zipping up their flies. Are in the city. It just goes on. I love that shit. I don't think kids. I, I don't think kids would tolerate that stuff anymore because it took a, you know, it took a lot of downtime. <laughs> yes. I mean, I've kind of used the analogy. We weren't in prison. When you're in prison, if somebody handed you just a stack of paper and some toothpicks, you just sit in your cell and craft it yeah. into a commercial office building right. or something. But. You would never do that at home. No. You'd go, I'm going to watch Sports options. Center yeah. or yeah. going to the movie theater yeah. or something like that. So given the sort of prisoner versus whatever my yeah. kids have today, we had to sit and learn all that stuff because we work sort of in confinement. Right. And that's all we had. Right. And they are not going to dedicate themselves to that. Well, we wouldn't have either. It's right. Just, no, just nobody would. Options. If you had Grubhub right. and satellite TV and Disney Plus yeah. and There's Hulu, no you would never you would never, would never do that. Up. What's weird about all this is Dawson grew up uh, regionally very close to me. Gina obviously is much younger. I've never heard a single one of these. What? Never a single did one. Did you go to like Catholic school or something? I did a little bit, but yeah, no, I did. But uh, I thought actually those might be worse. I went to Catholic both. school and they were all over yeah, the place. I feel wow. like they should have come out. Wow. Never heard of one. Ben, who's filling in for Chris today, is like 25. How old are you, Ben? 30. 30. <laughs> Baby Do 30. you know any of this shit? Uh, I know the Ask Me No More questions. Yeah, know Miss that Susie. One. Did you have any of these? I, you know, yo, you oh, know, the you're problem is. In the first and your pants are about to burst. I, I know that from yeah, parenthood. All right. You, also, you don't really have ubiqu- ubiquitous TV shows with a worded theme. Right. That you could modify. Point. Right. Now yeah. you guys are all watching some streaming thing on Hulu and there's no, that just goes right Skip into intro. it. It's not the big, or some little musical yeah. interlude and little then they go, they didn't, old Cosby show. Yeah. didn't have to, you're right. Tell the story. Didn't have to do the whole Gilligan's yeah. Island thing where you, it was, it was, it, it beckoned for right. you to change the words on it. Right. All right. Uh, in other uh, news, I don't know. First off, uh, we, U.S. lost the Netherlands. Why? I, I, why are you even saying this? I don't. I, first we off, I, what's the populace of the ne- Netherlands? I, 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 there were thirty million, twenty-two million people. Oh, or, I, would, I, I would bet less. Less. Seventeen. Seventeen million people. All right, we well, got as many as like L.A. Pro, like you yeah. know, the right. We, we got three hundred thirty million. This shouldn't happen. Number one. <laughs> number two. 
the uh, look, everyone tries to get me into soccer. Here's the deal. The U.S. played four games. They scored three goals. <laughs> That's it. They, they, they prepare for four years, and they get three goals. They average under a goal a game, and then they're oh, it's over. Yeah. I just I don't see why this is enticing to people or how you can get young people involved with this when this is this is how it plays out. It fundamentally goes against a lot of, not goes against, flies in the face of, is uh, and, and the Matu, a lot of the sports that, you know, are popular over here, basketball, football, whatever, where there's a lot of action, a lot of mm-hmm. scoring, you know, there's a... Fast pace. Yeah, fast pace. It's, it's, uh, it's a tough sell. I mean, baseball's a tough sell now for a lot of people. Try and get them into soccer where there's, like you said, one zero. All right, let me hit a spot here and tell you about Simply Safe Home. Well, that's where your family should feel the safest, especially over the holidays this season. Give them the gift of protection from the number one rated home security system. That is Simply Safe right now. Simply Safe is offering Adam Carolla Show listeners 40% off new security. Yeah, everyone here uses this. It, well, because it works. You can hop online, you can set up your system in a matter of minutes and then install it. It'll show up a couple days later and you can install it in under an hour. Name best home security system of 2022 by U.S. News and World Report. Third year in a row, 24 7 professional monitoring. Cost under a buck a day, less than half the price of traditional home security systems. Simply safe? Well, they got an app too. You can arm or disarm, unlock for a guest, access cameras, or adjust system settings. Anytime, anywhere, it's simply safe, right, Dawson? Don't miss your chance to save big on our fr- on our favorite security system. Get forty percent off any new system at simplysafe.com slash Adam today. That's simplysafe.com slash Adam. There's no safe like Simply Safe. All right, take a quick break. Be right back after this. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Hey. It's Bud the Ball Puller from Charlotte. I got a little life hack for you. When I get a little pee dribble on the front of my pants, what I do is I go to the sink and I splash a little water on the front of my pants and maybe even a little on the front of my shirt and then write the whole thing off as a hand-washing splash black incident. Keep up the good work, Ace Man. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. I've tried that one. The, the problem is, is A, a lot of people see through it, mm. a lot of guys especially. Mm. B, you went from a guy whose dick doesn't work to a guy whose hands don't work, <laughs> essentially. You're still an idiot. Right. One is, I can't take a whiz. The other is, I can't wash my hands. True. It's pick all your poison. bad. Pick yeah, your poison. You're, picking, you're incompetent either way. Pick your poison. All right. Um, God. What was the name of this movie that just came out? I feel like an idiot about the two girls who climbed the tower in Texas. I think it's called Fall. Or I think it's called Fall. Fall. Oh, never is it heard called of it. Fall? It's, is, is it? You, you can look it up. I think it was sitting at like 74% on uh, Rotten Tomatoes. I watched that shit with Sonny last night. That is a good movie. Oh, yeah. I think you oh, guys would, oh. uh, would enjoy movie? it. Netflix movie? Or, or Apple TV or something like that? Uh, maybe it was Apple TV. Dawson will tell us. I, I showed up sort of ill-prepared. but uh, Flew under the radar. Yes, streaming on Apple TV and Vudu. It's good. Cost mm-hmm. money. Yeah. Uh, it's a good movie if you guys like Wh- that kind of stuff. What's it about? Anyone of like note s- involved? A stunt climb doesn't look like it. I, I didn't recognize anybody. It's it's two girls and uh, they climb a old abandoned tower radio tower in texas in the middle of nowhere and oh, get yes. kind of stuck up there and yeah. what i realized is in traditional thriller horror movies or things like that there's times when the guy with the axe is around and then there's a lot of times when he's not around yeah but when you're stuck on top of a 2000 foot tower <laughs> it's always around it's like every shot down to the ground it's like oh also, I, I'm not really scared of heights, but I definitely feel them, and right. I could feel Makes your knees feel weak. It. Yeah, it was good. I mean, it had a, you know, a couple holes in it, as they do, and is a little bit predictable in certain ways, and it just kind of ended pretty quickly. But uh, I recommend it. I, okay. I thought it was good. The girls, uh, the actresses were great. Right. I don't know where they're from or I, what they've done. Me neither. Grace but, Curry and Virginia Gardner. They, uh, they're great. They did a, ni- they did a nice job. 
Uh, speaking of heights, um, there's a in the Indian Army is training birds to take down drones. Which and I, here we go. I, uh, I love it. You're never, no matter what we do with gyroscopes and four propellers and lithium ion batteries, you're never going to be able to do what a hawk does. Mm. You just that we're not going to be able to do. You know, like we could build a Jeep that could outrun a cheetah. Mm. I don't know that we're going to outdo what a bird of prey can do like weapon. up yeah. up in the air. And uh, I just love I, I I love the harnessing of uh, nature. I think we'll see a uh, see a clip of this. Um, guy lets the hawk go. Thing just flies right to the the drone. And 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 by the way, evidently birds will do. Just knocked it out of the air. Birds yeah. will do anything for food. <laughs> like Meatloaf. You could. I think you could get like a bird to kill your mother in law. <laughs> For like a piece of bologna, <laughs> I, I really do. They have they're so they're soulless killing machines. They have no thoughts other than you give me something to eat, I will pick up that cigarette butt, mm-hmm. I will take that drone out, I will attack this person. I just just yeah. as long as I can consistently get a square of cheese from you, yeah. I will do all of your bidding all of the time. And I'm remorseless. It, that doesn't make them bad or evil. They just have no direction. They have, That's like you right. said, they're soulless. They're not evil. Yes. 18 months from now, this is the next Top Gun. Oh, oh yeah. Fucking dog fighting between drones and... Uh, bir- oh, elite dog fighting to, to avoid the birds. Yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm telling you, my tech crows, somebody's working on it. We can't be far off with all the... God willing. Crazy street crime and school shootings and shootings at the Costco and shootings every... I, 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 Someone's got to get these crows working. We need a fast track czar, and we need him to be assigned to you. Because this shit, how, what is this, two decades old? We yes. can't keep waiting around for these things. <laughs> it's more than two decades old now. I know. Like, and, and, and what they're doing, they're doing this thing where they're, I think San Francisco, I don't fully understand it, it. But they have a robot, yes. and the robot has like an explosive device yes. on it. Two on and yeah, and and sometimes the robots have a shotgun for blowing up bombs or something. Or uh, send the robot in, send the dog in, send the crows. Yeah, just send the crows. I don't know what the robot. Look, San Francisco is charging 1.7 million bucks for a single commode <laughs> toilet. God knows what they're charging for a robot with yeah. explosives yeah. on it. That, yeah. That's got to be 10 toilets worth. Yeah, at least. Crows are free. <laughs> they're free. And if a dog and dies. Plentiful, so. Yes. If a dog dies, you get the canine funeral with like the cops. And it's so sad. And everybody is affected. Bird dies. Mm. And also. I'll change they're listening. <laughs> I would bet you you could get those things coached up and trained up easily by just some dude you paid thirty five bucks an hour to. You give might a have to pay him, so we don't need a might falconer. Even enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, you can get a falconer. I don't yeah. know what their hourly rate is, yeah, but they're usually available. That's my thing about falconers; they're not busy. Uh, no, they're on demand. No. The worst you're going to get is like, "Where's Falconer Steve? He's standing in a field with his arm out." <laughs> <laughs> When's he coming back? I don't know. Whenever the bird comes back, he'll yeah. come back. If Whenever he ben, flushes out a rabbit. If Ben in there called a falconer to book him for some lessons, yeah. do you think he'd say, I'm available later today, or I can't do anything for 10 months? Yeah, yeah. nothing in 2022. Yeah. Right. All right. So uh, we let's get going on that. I, I, There has to be a program. Somebody's working on this. Well, that's if all. Really, that's all the I know. Indian Army is training the hawks. The crows got can't be far behind, right. or they must be already in works. All right, somebody. It's got to be uh, some kind of Vegas question. Great time in Vegas. Another oh. guy's calling from Vegas. How'd you get this number? <laughs> ben, thirty-six, Oregon. Hey, Ace Man, had a great time in Vegas. Just wanted to uh, call in, say, uh, hey, I hope everyone's doing good, and I hope you enjoy your cape. I dropped it off with uh, Chris. I heard it's in the studio. <laughs> a cape or a cake? Cape. 
I oh. got the ace man a cape. What? Knocked off the bucket list. Yeah. Well, it's not the ownership of the cape. It's having it removed in earnest when I'm Correct. on stage. Yeah. That's, that's, on my that's, we got to make that's sure that that room. happens at a good event. Maybe Actually, for the barbecue or something. I think August could do that. Yeah, we got some live shows coming from Phoenix yeah. in a couple of weeks. It's a good job for him. Did you uh, come out to the Vegas show with Carrot Top? I did, yeah. Originally, uh, the cape was supposed to be for the Portland show in December uh, about a year ago now, but I didn't make it, uh, make, didn't get the uh, cape made in time, so <laughs> I was glad to, to see you in Vegas and get that to you. That was a great show, too. You guys were hilarious. It was, a, it was a funny show, and it really kind of made me realize that when you're on stage and you're in between a couple of funny guys was it josh wolf who was yes. up so. there with he's yeah, real, he's top, yeah yeah they're both real funny they're both good on their feet and then all it does is sort of the tide raises all the comedy boats you can't mail it in you have to kind of compete yeah. a little bit you're you're Make sort of better yeah it's like um you know basketball team having a couple good players and running scrimmages and stuff it's just, we've kind of lost that but it brings it brings it out yeah. in you um definitely well, thanks, Ben. I'm glad you had a good time. Hell yeah. Get it on. Thanks for the cape, man. I appreciate it. Especially now that it's cooled off out yeah, here. Yeah, you need it. Mm-hmm. You've received any number of gifts over the years from listeners. Is this your first cape? I think so. That's amazing. Hope it sound about I'd right. have to go. I've not seen so many capes floating no. around. I'd have to go. Coral Studios. And not too many <laughs> Captain Steubing dinner jackets. Cape's a weird... Um, Batman and Robin had capes. Superman had a cape. I'm trying to think who the cape folks were. Uh, it seems Dr. Uh, Strange unnecessary. Yeah, he uses his cape. Yeah, his is, is uh, prehensile. Yeah, the, Dracula. Uh, the other other capes don't seem more for effect. They don't seem to be practical. Yeah. As the Incredibles has taught us, capes bad news. They'll suck yeah. into a jet engine right. or yeah. Yeah. trip over it. Dangerous, right? Uh, Jake twenty eight from Vegas. Jake? Hey, hey, this Jake, is Jake with Jake Vegas. How's it going, guys? What's going on, Vegas? Where are the good parts to live in Nevada? You know what? That's part of the reason I'm calling. I was just going to say there's really not a whole lot of good places to live in Nevada. Uh, we have a lot of meth heads and crackheads here. Mm-hmm. For instance, I'm at, the ga- I'm at the gas station, bro. I'm just trying to get some gas. Dude comes up to me talking about how he knows I'm in the CIA and that he knows that I'm after him, right? Is there, By the way, is, is there anything uglier than desert crazy? No. Because I can no, take no, Portland no. crazy and Seattle crazy more than I can take desert crazy. Have you been out to Riverside? Right. Oh, it's so it's such a sad tableau. It's a desperate kind of crazy. It's something about the heat and the crazy. That's exactly yes. it. It's a desperate crazy. Exactly. So, like, when you're when you're phased with the, are you in the CIA, you can either go, what are you talking about? Or you can kind of lean into it and just be like, hey, man, it's too late. We're on you. We've caught you. It's too late. Like, we're, we've, we've, we've hunted you down, which is what I went with. Um, <laughs> apparently, people are really cool with assaulting you at <laughs> the gas station parking lot in Vegas. Uh, well, here, so, too. Yeah, I just, go ahead. Here, too. L.A., too. There's some places in uh, Henderson and Summerlin. I think Summerlin's nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I live off the strip. I'm a comedian myself here in Vegas, so I just I live off the strip. I can walk to the places and do stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I've made better choices in my life. Mm. Mm. How's the comedy going? It's all right, dude. You know what? The thing is with comedy out here is it's kind of like either you get on with, like, bigger named people or you just kind of do fucking open mics all night and you travel. So mm-hmm. I've been doing a lot more comedy, just like going to L.A. or going to Austin or something like that. So I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to stick around in Vegas. It seemed like a better idea before I moved here. Where'd you move from? Uh, I moved here from Minneapolis, but uh, I moved here because Minneapolis was kind of having some riots at the time. And my apartment building was right next to the one that got burned down on the cover of Time magazine. Oh, shit. Mm. <laughs> Well, right. you're in the CIA, so I should have seen yeah. that coming. Right. They were, they were targeting me. They knew. They knew I was in that building. They were like, the CIA is here. You ever get out to Jimmy Kimmel's club? It's reopened. Not really. Not really. I mean, to be honest with you, uh, yeah, no, not really. <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel, uh, not really. So you're saying now? <laughs> no, nah, he's not my favorite person, but you know what? That's cool. Do you like, like working? I, I've actually, yeah. I, but hold on, I don't, I don't get the association. Yeah. First off, Jimmy's never there. 
Secondly, you know, well, I, I didn't know what kind of guy Bud Freeman was, but I was willing to <laughs> take the stage and get paid by Bud Freeman. I mean, yeah, I, I liked so. Bud I Freeman, mean, maybe, but I wouldn't have factored in or Mitzi Shore. It, hmm? Maybe it's just a different way of thinking about it. I mean, the Shore family is way different. I wouldn't say that. I would. I wouldn't agree with that. That Mitzi Shore and going to the comedy stores and anything similar to Jimmy Kimmel. I mean, Mitzi Shore never really puts her. Uh, Put yourself out there as well when she was alive. But anyway, that's besides the point. Well, I I, I, talk show I think you're limiting your your venues by your reading too much into the politics of the people that may own the venues. You know, I, I'd say open it up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a great club. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, no, you're totally right. You're totally right. And we don't know the politics of the, all, the multiple comedians that are booked there. And I don't think they get booked based on... On that? Oh, no, I wasn't really even mentioning his politics anyway. It's just more of his, uh, and, and that's besides the point. That really wasn't meant, meant well, to be the, the deciding what, factor. What's, there, the, but, no. No. what's the beef with Jimmy if not uh, not for the politics? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't really want to get into it, but no. I mean, I'm not just uh, the way that, I, I'm just not a huge fan of him. I mean, I could get into it for an hour and a half, but I've, I mean, well, let's, I grew let's, up in a way that I've watched him, I watched him on to TV, 40 I watched his shows, I've seen how he treats other people. I'm not a big fan of it. I mean, All right, let's, I'm just not let's, a big fan of it. Let's drill down a little bit. Oh, I have my cape, by the <laughs> way. It's evil Knievel esque. This is yes. amazing. It's got a big A on the back of it. It's I, really I, I, I shall don it. It is gorgeous. So, Jake, I'm, I'm curious. Now I'm, I'm intrigued. Um, Jimmy Kimmel, a lot of people say, oh, he's gone so hard left, but, uh, and they have a, they have a beef with that. Some do, but I don't know anyone who has a beef with Jimmy just as Jimmy as a a host or how he treats people. So we were all assuming this was sort of politically motivated, but you're saying you got a beef with Jimmy, the person. I mean, I'm just not a big fan of the way that he handles his uh, controversy, I suppose. I mean, like, you have to, okay, let's get in. I mean, if I didn't really want to get into it, but I guess we'll, I guess we'll do that. So uh, we can talk about how, like, um, when he did the, had a bunch of kids sitting around the table, like six-year-olds discussing the U.S. government shutdowns and U.S. debt. I mean, there was that, and he was kind of playing it off like there wasn't anything wrong with that at the time. Um, I mean, we, there's, there's plenty of reasons that don't just go into, I mean, the 72nd Primetime Emmy Awards, um, Talking about like when he was like blackface, which obviously I don't give a shit about blackface. Um, I think that it's kind of overused at this point. But honestly, and I might just be putting words in my mouth at this point. But I don't know. I'm just not a big fan of how um, like he made a joke about how she was uh, when she when he interviews Megan Fox and like I don't remember when that was, but she talked about how she was like sexualized at age 15, and he was like, oh well, not a big deal. I mean, I'm not really big on things like that. So I guess, I mean, we've all made mistakes. This is the way that you handle the mistakes. I guess that's where my criticism comes in. And I, I'm sure that people have got plenty of criticisms of my of, of me, and I'm sure that you've got some of your no. own at the moment. But that's just kind of where I don't where think anyone knows you outside of your family. So, But there shall be some of that. Um, Jake, I would say you may be overthinking this a little too much, you know, as a budding comedian. Not your relationship with Jimmy Kimmel. I just mean, you know, I got. I don't like the way, like the stuff you mentioned. I have some vague memories of, but it, it shouldn't shouldn't be top of mind. Is it's, what I'm saying. It's weird. I'm kind of on board. Actually, I want your opinion on this. If you were, if Mike August came to you and said, "Hey, I got a potential weekend at the Bill Cosby Theater," would you have any qualms? Let's about- guarantee. <laughs> My point is, if you have like, a, I didn't really hear if you have that, like a philosophical problem with the way this person like lives their life criminally or not, maybe that's one thing. But if you don't like I, their I, style, maybe I don't know. It's another I, thing. You know, I first things first. I could walk around every single one of our homes and find 171 <laughs> items that was made in China. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Everybody I know sure. sits around the internet, orders Amazon, gets piles of shit from China all day, every day, and then we talk about the atrocities and the Uyghurs and the, the Muslims and how they treat their people and the slave. We're simultaneously talking about slave labor and looking for... Um, the best price. Best price for a camera for a phone holder that sticks yeah. to our windshield. That's all out of it's all yeah. out of China. <laughs> so like, well, there's the old Jews who like won't buy a Mercedes, right? Or won't buy a well, whatever Volkswagen. Yeah, it's like they're keeping it real. They're still taking it to the grave, man. This is a blood vendetta. I yeah, am. I in general 
try not to connect like like the idea of boycotting reruns of the Cosby show or something like that. I, it's sort of or Chick-fil-A or whatever. It's just I don't know, feels feels a little life is too short. Um some I'm Which that I'm way with tearing with, down I'm statues and, and that, that you know, hmm. protesting Chick fil A is a good idea, but I think that there is a difference between I mean, comparing Bill Cosby and what he did to Chick to Chick fil A are a little it's a little disingenuous in my opinion. Uh, I just, well, I'm not delicious. sure that that's. <laughs> no, I'm not trying to. Maybe it's just because I saw Jay Leno and I'm thinking about Chick fil A. I'm not equating the two. I'm basically saying first, I would ask this What is the effect of you not playing the Bill Cosby Theater? Like, mm-hmm. what, 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 you know, I feel the same way about. St- tearing down a lot of statues. It's sort of like, well, what is the direct effect to the community that you're worried about? Like, is the, can I draw a straight line right. through this? And if, sure. I, if I can't, I'm usually kind of, eh, I keep walking for the most part. On, on sure. the other hand... Well, number one, I understand, but number one, there's more comedy venues than Jimmy Kimmel's venue, and there's bigger comedians than Jimmy Kimmel. So I guess I'm not too worried about just one comedian in that, in that, mind, in that mindset. Yeah. I'm under the same mindset. I guess I would say that if, I, I mean, let's go back to when Joe Rogan had his incident with the comedy store and he was gone. And I mean, I, I'm, I, I highly doubt anyone was like, well, Joe, huh, your career, it's, it's gone. You've just, I mean, the comedy store, it's all you've got. I, you know, there's, there's more things than just having one. And I, and I, like I said, I wasn't trying to, to hitch my, uh, my trailer here to Jimmy Kimmel. And that's kind of what it turned into. But, um, like I said, I've, there, there's more than just one venue because I haven't taken a place at Jimmy Kimmel doesn't mean I haven't taken a place at the Laugh Factory or at the other comedy club hey, in hey, town. Hey, Jake, if you, uh, don't mind so me, guess, if you don't mind me saying, first off, August wanted me to play Sun City in the 80s. Mm-hmm. I said no. True. Not during a part time. Wrong. Um, but I, I kind of get the no one's playing Sun City because of apartheid and in Africa and South Africa. And I go, okay, message sent. Sure. Maybe that has a, some sort of financial impact or, or something. Uh, I get it. But Jake, you sound way too serious to be a comedian, if you don't mind me saying. I, I, I feel like um, when I was 28 and trying to do comedy, I, I would have been cracking wise if I was calling in to my show. You know what I'm saying? You've done what? Mm. There's a f- term called crack wise, you know, and I've been making jokes and trying to Shuck and right. yeah. spread, Make with the yuck. spread a little mirth. No, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I was definitely trying to, and then it kind of turned into, well, let's discuss your personal views on Jimmy Kimmel. And so, I mean, I was making jokes about being in the CIA, and I guess it just kind of turned All right. into, All right. well, let's why say, don't you like Jimmy Kimmel? Why don't Kimmel? you give it? Well, <laughs> I just asked if you'd play his club because he's in Vegas and uh, kiss ass, sell out. Turncoat, um, Turncoat. Uh, oh God, Benedict Arnold, yep. Orny Adams is oh, going to be playing Jimmy's Jesus. Club coming oh. up December 29th and 30th. Hold so, his feet to the fire. Um, give us, why don't you give us a good, like, give us a good 90 seconds of your act, Jake. <laughs> uh, God, now I'm on the spot. Oh God. All right. I mean, I don't really have like just. Oh man, now I, got, I really should have came up with some fucking. That's butt. all right. All but, right, just think. It's a joke. It's a joke that does well typically. Yeah. I'm sorry. A, like, jo- a joke that typically does well. You can always turn to this bit. Hmm. Oh, okay. Well, I guess. Uh... Oh God. I can always turn to this bit. There's a couple. Okay. The one. I guess. Okay. <laughs> so back when I was. <laughs> Hold on a second. Poor, I, poor Jake. I get. <laughs> I get the grandpa at the wedding where you put the camcorder in front of him uh-huh. and like, Uncle Lou, say a few words. And he's a little like, oh, 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 we, we, we wish uh, Steve and, 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 and his new bride. And his, his wife is Connie. <laughs> See, uh, we, we, oh, well, we wish him well. Like, I get that. But stand up comedians, if you go. You got something holstered. Give me, give me, give me best one. Give me a solid you should You should have that one ready to go. Uh, let's see, Jake. Wait. You ready? Okay, yeah. Like it. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Yeah, as I was. Okay, yeah. Uh, back when I was, uh, let's see, twenty-three, I was already the GM of a store, um, which is way too young to be in charge of a store because I was barely in charge of myself. I just barely could make my own food. Now, when I'm at the, I'm in charge of the store. I'm looking at the cameras. There's a guy in the stick section. This guy is jiggling his pants 
just a little too funky on the left side. I'm like, what's going on with this guy? As I watch, there is a human turd that is tobogganing down his left pant leg, and it falls out onto my carpet in the store. We go up to this gentleman, and we ask, hey, sir, uh, looks like you might have shit on our floor. You wouldn't mind cleaning that up? <laughs> he looks at the shit, and he goes, oh, no, man, that wasn't me. I go, sir, sir, this was clearly your shit right here on the floor. I watched your video. I've been doing it. This guy bends over, picks it up with his bare hand like he's done it before, and carries it outside, sets it on the concrete, and then goes and shops the rest of his day like nothing happened. Brian, got some laughter. All right, terrible joke. No, no, it's, it's a I, story. It's, 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 a, it's an interesting story. <laughs> yeah. Just needed that, needed that punch. Off the stage, fag! <laughs> Saving that for Ernie Adams. <laughs> hey, Jake. I had to burn it. <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to be honest, though. Um, the, the gentleman in the back, I'm having a hard time hearing, to be honest with you. Oh, okay. Brian, Sorry, it's buddy. your fault. All Sorry, right. buddy. All right, Jake. Look, uh, you've shown a lot of uh, potential. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> That's a lie, but thank you. I, uh, you know, I wouldn't. I would, I would play any club that would have me, even if it was Jimmy Kimmel's club. That's what of I Of course. Would say. I mean, obviously, if someone offers the spot or if I go for it, that's one thing. But like I said, I guess I just what the point that I was trying to make was I'm not going out of my way to, to submit and try to like tell my agent, hey, man, I really got to get into Jimmy Kimmel's club tonight. That's, that's really not my push is what I guess I was just trying to say by that. I really wasn't looking forward to get into a, uh, <laughs> a philosophical yeah. conversation. But no. Who's your agent? Is he the guy at the gas station who thinks you're in the CIA, or is this another guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he's at the gas station. <laughs> All right, well, thanks, Jay. Yeah, he's in the CIA. Keep it up and, and check back with us. All right, well, have a good day, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Thank you. All right, we have real comedian Orny Adams waiting in the wings who uh, always brings it. First, I'll tell you about the Jordan Harbinger show. All right, our good friend Orny Adams is waiting out there. We'll bring him in and we'll get into this right after this. Orny Adams back in studio. Not only is he going to be at Jimmy's Club December 29th, 30th, but before that, December 16th, 17th, he'll be at the Bray Improv and then soon to be joining the cast of Cirque du Soleil. Soleil. Oh, are you doing Mad Apple? I am, yeah. yeah. What is it? What am oh, I doing? Brad Williams like started it. That's why we know about it. He's been on to talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Good luck to you. It's going to be like a fucking acid trip with it's, a fever it's, dream. It's a nightmare already, isn't it? I yeah. shouldn't have taken it. Yeah. My agent tried to talk me out of it. Did he? First, they offered me six months. He goes, you'll lose your mind. I can't be anywhere for six months. Tilt, tilt your mic up Especially a little Vegas. bit Especially Vegas. It's my first yeah. time in broadcasting. Yeah. Then, uh, so they, they said, six, six months. I said, no. Not even like, we didn't even counter. No. Right. They said, how about three months? No. Two months? No. How about the month of December? Well, I'm already at, uh, you know me, Turncoat Adams. Yeah. Right. I'm at P- Kimmel's. Playing Sun City over at Kimmel's. Right. Kimmel's. And then I've, I'm in Brea. This is a good month for me. Right. Big tickets. Mm-hmm. So they said, what about the first two weeks? Well, I was at a theater last week, so I couldn't do it. So I said, how about one week for what you were going to pay me for six months? <laughs> and? They said no. <laughs> 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 but I'm doing it. They, they, they came up and uh, we negotiated and I'm doing it. What am I going to do? Brad said it's really fun. I'm glad you're honest in an open book about this stuff because so often people go, what made you decide? And it's like, I, so I can get paid. Right. They don't say to roofers, what made you decide <laughs> yeah. to go with the three tab presidential? It's like, I'm getting paid to climb onto somebody's roof and do something. Like that, <laughs> I, that's yes. every job in the world. Except for when it comes to anything creative, then right. we have to be inspired. Right. We want to change the minds right. and hearts of children and the nation or whatever. No, no. Comedians like getting paid to do shit like mailmen get paid to do shit. Yeah, I thought two things. One, and first of all, uh, yeah, I thought it's interesting. Mm-hmm. It'll be a good talking point. People uh-huh. get excited. It'll, my corporate fee will go through the roof. Yeah. But I only have to do a week. To yeah. say I was in the cast of Cirque du Soleil. Sure. No yeah. one's going to say, how long? I'll go long enough. And everyone will, who's out of context will think you can blow yourself. Because <laughs> once you say I was in the cast of yeah. Cirque du Soleil, everyone goes, oh, I guess yeah. he, could do he doesn't need a partner. guess you don't know about the audition process. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the thing about 
comedians, which are which is interesting as it just popped in my head, they will simultaneously want, you know, if you said to Jay Leno, hey, I got a corporate gig for you in Nebraska, I have $6,000. She'd go, eh, I'm getting on planes next time. That. You know, it would be, I, I'm guessing 50 would be the minimum, probably more like 100. Like, when, but if you said to him, hey, come on out to the improv and do 15 right. minutes for $100, he'd oh, right. go like, man, what night? Right. Like, it, it, I, all the comedians I've ever worked with will either work for ostensibly free or oh. negotiate and argue <laughs> over doing, well, does that have to be an hour? Can I do 40 minutes? You right, know what I mean? Right. And why is it 75K? Why not 100K? You know, like, cause it, I have, they'll just negotiate, 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 or do shit for free. It Same is, job. There's, there's no middle. There's no, there's middle, no middle whatsoever. It's, yeah, my corporate fee is way up there. Yes. But you're right. I, I was at the improv the other night for uh, gas money. 30 I think they bucks used to, sometimes. They used to call it gas <laughs> which, money. Which, by the way, suggests that what you do is not very difficult. Right. And, and because I don't think, like, if you build cinder block walls, you don't have a, well, I could do it over here, I'd want 50 grand, but for you, I'll do it for five bucks. Like, right. It's it's blocks, well, it's work. the clubs initially, going back to when I started, they were doing us a favor. Mm -hmm. You can be seen. Right. Here's your opportunity to build your act. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm beyond that point. Yes. Now I want to get paid. Yes. And thus, the Cirque. And and what, how, many, how much time do you do? Did you work Ten that Ten minutes. One? Oh. In the middle of the show. And then I had to sit there and take a bow. That was the big negotiation. Can I leave when the show's over? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm going to stick around. No, when, when your, your show's, show's over. over. Yeah, when I'm done. Right. Yeah. No, you know, you know why you can't? Because Brad Williams, when he did it, there was a little there was a little accident during one of the acrobats. And he had to come out and, and stall. And well, entertain. I'm charging extra for that. Yeah, I'm not oh, kidding. Yeah. If the there's clock. an injury and I have to go out there like a rodeo clown and <laughs> yeah. divert attention away from the blood pile... Yeah. Sorry, that's not in the yeah. contract. Eight to ten minutes a night. If I haven't done it already, mm -hmm. I'm sorry that Brad's a team player. Maybe that's why he's doing so well, but I'm not. Got I'm it. about the bottom line. Got it. Uh, I will donate 10% to some organization if somebody is hurt and I have yeah. to rodeo clown it and charge more. Yeah, like there's children of parents that perished on the wheel of death. <laughs> dot org. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you could, it's a 501 You could throw them 10 bucks. Yeah. You know, did... Uh, I don't know why, but I always get depressed when I see those commercials or those billboards along the highways they always have here with the kids whose parents work for the the construction. The, yeah, they work they work for the road crew that's cleaning yeah. stuff up. They're like, my mom and my dad are out there. Like, take yeah. it easy with your drunk driving. I'm like, look, if your dad's picking up garbage by the side of the freeway, <laughs> you should hope he's clipped by a guy who's fully insured, <laughs> and then you just hammer that check. Yeah, yeah. I'd be doing you a favor, you little yeah. shit. Yeah. Did, um, I don't know why this popped my head, but I, I know you kind of got started uh, with Seinfeld. Well, I got started, but you got the doc. With, mm -hmm. Was it comedian? Yeah. And Seinfeld, and there's always that connection there. And I was with uh, Spike Ferriston uh, over the weekend, doing the car stuff, but I don't know if you had any connection with Spike. No, I, 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 I don't. I barely have a connection with Seinfeld at this point. We haven't really kept in touch. <laughs> I had. Well, <laughs> I don't get it. There was a quality. little bit of a debacle that went down with that story. Uh. And, and I, will, I will say this as an aside. It was kind of nice because I was talking to Spike, who talks to Seinfeld every day, and he said, hey, uh, did Paul McCartney come out to your show at the Improv? And I said... Yeah, I did. And he said, oh, good, because I sent that picture over to over to Jerry. And I said, why? And he said, because he says he's friends with Paul McCartney, which I'm sure he is. Right. But I asked him if Paul's ever come out to one of his shows, and he said no. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I, like, I like a little ball busting. Yeah, yeah to mm -hmm. be competitive. What was that story? I have a vague memory you of. You know the story. I you, can't. This is like, uh, you know, I met Brooke Shields once, and she said, this is your Blue Lagoon. Mm -hmm. She said, you're going to have to talk about this in every interview mm. for the rest of your career. Mm. The, the, the story was, it's very simple, and you can see how I would get into this situation. I was working in New York City. I was one of the comedians that was playing every single club every night, and I was on top of the world. Nothing could dethrone my excitement. You know, I'm closing the, uh, these, these 
comedy clubs in New York City, and I'm inviting women out, and it's a, you know it's a social launching pad. And then all of a sudden, Seinfeld decides to come around with his dated act <laughs> and uh, take some of the stage time. So you know they go, uh, "Hey, Orny, uh, we're gonna put Jerry on instead of you tonight." I'm like, "But my four friends <laughs> from Staten Island." Looks like your four friends are enjoying Jerry more than they <laughs> enjoy you. So this kept going on. Like, I was closing. Even back then, they would have me call. And we're talking, there's like Chappelle on the show and Lucy. I mean, you know, great comics Heavy I'm working hitters. with. Heavy hitters. And uh, not that they weren't closing or good enough, obviously. But in, in my memory is I was closing. And one night, he had this camera crew with him over and over again. Every time I saw the crew, if I walked in and saw... The stupid guy with the camera. You knew Seinfeld was there. Yeah, I knew mm-hmm. Seinfeld was coming. So one night they said, you know, you seem very animated. Does this, this doesn't sound like me. Like you <laughs> imagine me complaining to everybody right. that Seinfeld's, <laughs> sure. you know, hot off the, the greatest sitcom of all time. Certainly. So they said, uh, uh, do you mind if we record you? We want to ask you some questions. They said, what do you think of Jerry's act? I said, I don't think it's that good. I think mm-hmm. it's dated. His mm-hmm. cadence is dated. Mm-hmm. The topics are uninteresting. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, get with the times. Yeah, all the guys are doing I shit myself in the right. uh, aisle at the Walmart right. now, and he's still talking about airplane uh, food. Airplane food and what happened to the other sock. Right. I guarantee that guy will be opening for me in Vegas. That guy. You'll see. You'll see. Uh, so they showed Jerry the tape, and Jerry said, uh, quote unquote, this is the most honest man. Nobody has the balls to criticize me. Follow him. Mm. Now, uh, on a, on a, uh, people have now surmised that this was done as an elaborate hoax to ruin my career, to follow me and put me in this documentary. That's not the way I feel. I think Jerry had good intentions, but you have to create this contrast. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, the, it, there were two versions of the documentary. The first version was very kind to me. Mm-hmm. It showed me moving to Los Angeles and getting a deal with Warner Brothers Television. And it uh, showed more stand-up. It was a cool version. Then it got sold to Merrimax, and I was vilified. Mm. And to this day, Weinstein, I am still considered the villain. People come up to me. They're still angry. Mm-hmm. It's on Netflix ago. I saw you in the new Seinfeld. It's not even HD, but they saw me in the new Seinfeld. Right. Seinfeld's now producing pro- projects, but in, uh, you know, 720p. <laughs> right. So they go, you, you're a whore. I'm, I'm, a vi- I'm a villain in a documentary that has Bill Cosby <laughs> and was executive produced by Harvey Weinstein. Wow. wow. That's saying something. Hard At to do. what point? <laughs> Let me try to put you in a better mood. <laughs> You brought up Brooke Shields. Yeah. I Wait saw, a minute, is that when I lost you? Because I no, saw you. No, but okay. I, I started thinking about Brooke. Yeah. But no, I was I was there for every syllable. Okay. The Don't ask me what you said. Um, I saw Brooke Shields on some commercial because she's a new Lifetime, you know, Christmas mm-hmm. something where she plays the mom. You know, I keep a list of, of women I could now fuck. Right. Mm-hmm. Who, you know... It began with Charlene Tilton from from Dallas. Mm. She was a perky, little, diminutive, beautiful blonde. She was probably 22. I was babysitting at 14. All I could do was stare at the TV set Uh with a boner. But now... Gettable. I could get her. Okay. And she's probably in her 60s. Right. You know, she hasn't worked in 30 years. Yeah. The X and Y axis. The X... Yeah, right. We started... When I was 13 or 14 at the bottom of an X, Charlene Tilton was on one side, yeah. Adam Carolla was on the other, uh, and we've started, we started, wait, and, and I may have crossed Charlene Tilton. I, we got to find out how old she is. <laughs> yeah, Can I ask you a question? Like would you, now now that you could sleep with her, is she still something you would want to sleep with? It feels like I'm maybe, thinking about it. Remember, the, you know, the inverse, oh, you are? Okay. I'm, I'm considering it. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, She's 64. At some point, we will cross. And and I think I crossed her. Yeah. I may have still been in my 30s when I when I crossed her. I had oh. the man show going. Uh-huh. I had Love Line going. She, you know, whatever, Dallas or Falcon Crest sure. or Dynasty or whatever shit show she was on. It was long. That yeah. was history. That was, oh, she was a Ewing. She was on Dallas. She was on Dallas. Yeah. Cute. Yeah, very. But a lot of it is, is probably, may have put on a couple pounds, eh. you know. Kind of, kind of little, worked her way I out of the s- business a little. I, I s- don't think I could get her now. I don't think I've crossed. Oh, well. Yeah. I don't know. I, mean, I, I think you, Charlene, I, look, the ultimate. <laughs> you don't? You don't? 
You're looking at a picture of her? She's a 64-year-old woman. God bless her. Hey, look, that's, she just looks like the way she's look, supposed to look. She was in her early 50s when I passed Dog. Her. No. That's when I crossed. Mm. Got it. Brooke but Shields is 57. The ultimate. Yeah. When are we getting to Brooke Shields, Orny? Well, she's married to Chris Henchy. Yeah. They have well, kids. We're not going to factor that in. Okay. Yeah. Do she you think- probably likes, you know, men with a sense of humor. Mm-hmm. You've done well. You're very active. You're out of the house a lot. I am. I'm out right now. These are great. I think this is what women are looking for. Not something out of the like, house. Yeah, you can fix shit. I Chris am can't handy. fix anything. Oh yeah, he created. He he helped create Funny or Die. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Are they still Yawn. together? Uh, the, it seems to be. Oh, what have man. you done for me lately? Let me right. tell you something about Chris, because I used to play basketball with this guy, so I've got the rub on mm-hmm. on Chris. I know anything you, you need to know. He's the guy in the room that, uh, you know, I'm around all these super famous people, and so I'd be more timid, mm-hmm. you know, to, like, throw out a funny line. Right. So I'd sort of say it softly, and then Chris would repeat it loudly <laughs> and get the laugh. Oh, really? And just sort of look at me like, you know, uh, he knew what he was doing. Cyrano de Bergerac. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I'm the reason he's married to Brooke. Interesting. I, yeah. If only she knew. She knows. Oh, okay. Here's That'll the, be part of my pitch, by the way, in my X-crossing thing. Yeah. Here's the well, other look, thing. Well, I, look, I, I think I could get most of the cast of Dallas yeah. at this no. point. Jane Wyman. Falcon Crest. Uh-huh. For sure. Mm. Bonanza, if they're still alive. Mm-hmm. You, you know what, what about I mean? current? Is there anybody on a current big show? No, we have to wait for them to put on weight and get older and for the business to dry So up. you don't get the hot, the hot, I don't want to say the word, but the hot uh, women. The No. Yeah. No. I you think. Get them on, this seems like a hmm? self-esteem issue. Time Possibly. out. Time out. Because I don't want to put words in her mouth, mm. but I'm pretty sure Natasha Henstridge would be Ooh, available yeah, to maybe. it in some in some parallel universe. And God rest her soul, Anne Hayes. Sure, have, yeah, uh, yeah. Taking a taking yeah. a lap. Right. Uh, you might have been the last thought to go through her brain. Quite possibly. Yeah. Yeah. It's not provable, <laughs> but I'd like to think it's think likely. You, have, you know what I think? I bet there is somebody out there that is so like beyond gorgeous of a specimen of a of a woman with a brain. Thank you. Successful. Yeah classy mm. that has a fetish for Adam Carolla. Mm. <laughs> she, it has yeah, to be a fetish. It's a fe- no, it's a fetish. <laughs> a perversion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, she's not well. <laughs> no, no. She's not well. Twisted. <laughs> Undiagnosed yeah. mental Probably issue. ancient trauma yeah. she's dealing with. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, no Probably dad Probably recently in the picture. uncovered a lot of memories. Yeah. A lot of memories. Yeah. Uncovered memories are never, oh, we went to Disneyland and had a corn dog. <laughs> so if somebody dropped the, a digit. There is somebody that if yeah. she came forward, mm. you would say, wow, yeah. I didn't know I was that successful. Sure. Yeah. Like, you'd be all cocky. Mm-hmm. You know, you would go back to, you know, Adam Carolla, 1987. She's mm. probably not allowed out on her own recognizance, <laughs> but she's out there. She exists. I don't think she's that far off of... You know, I, I she can get a day pass. Okay, all right. I don't think she's. You know, I, I think she's actually somebody that we would be envious. Of. Is this a yeah. dream team situation? Yeah, I think Michael so. Keaton? Michael Keaton. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think there's one. There's one out there. Orny, in our long list of uh, comedians who I talk to on a weekly basis who do not have children, mm-hmm. who are made it into their fifties, can mm-hmm. we add you to that? Yeah, list? please do. And survivor mm. is. Me too. It can, it can we all right? Let me tell me if this is a, is correct. Mm-hmm. In the past, when you talk to men or women who are older and just never had kids and they're not gonna have kids, they would do a lot of "Oh, you're so lucky. I'm so envious." Blah mm-hmm. blah blah. And then they would do a lot of just never really met the right person mm-hmm. to like settle down. The newer theme is. Fuck all you people with kids. I'm enjoying my shit. Yes. And I'll see you in hell. Yeah. Like they're not, they're, now, they're always thinking it, but they have to give a pretense of like, oh, you're so, that's so gift. What a gift that you have these two little things no. that just suck money and no. life from your soul. I've never been married either. And then people, I'll go out on dates and like, whoa, the women are like, you've never been married. <laughs> I'm like, you've been divorced twice. <laughs> you're the one with a marriage problem. Yeah, right. True. Yeah. Not me. I mean, yeah. I go home. I was home for Thanksgiving. My nephew, okay, the kid's like 10. 
I ask him to do something. Like, oh, could you help us empty the dishwasher? The kids get up from the table and they just go on their devices. Yes. And now the adults clean. No. I waited my entire <laughs> life to not clean. Yeah. So I said, hey, I won't say his name. I go, let's go. Dishwasher. He said, "You, I don't have to listen to you. Wow. Oh, yeah. You, like don't, you don't know how to talk to kids because you don't have kids. Oh, boy. And you'll <laughs> never have kids Whoa. because no woman would ever marry you. Wow. Jesus Christ. This now kid he's, heard this. Thing. Now, he's <laughs> not wrong. <laughs> Did he see that he's, Seinfeld doc? <laughs> he's not wrong, but he's out of the will. Yeah. That kid out. is out of the will. Wow. I, am, I mentally, I rewrite my will when I'm at home, and I'm just moving piles of cash around. There that, are, uh, there's no reverence. The, the, the only thing that's good about getting old is so you, you would have kids. Theoretically, kids were going to listen to you. Yeah. W- when I was a kid... The rules were you had to listen to any adult at any time, yeah. no matter who they were. Fuck yeah. I would, you could listen to On your own playground? parents. Right. Playground. Any authority. The, the, not, your, your parent, your friend's parents oh, please. had the ultimate authority yes. over yeah. you. And even their fucking friends would buy, I, 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 I got busted getting in the refrigerator and mm-hmm. stuff, but it wasn't my buddy Chris's mom, it was her friend who was able to yell at me in the kitchen. Yeah, and tell them fact, you. In yeah. the old days, your friend's parents were allowed to hit you. Oh, yeah. sure. Been hit twice. Tell them by who? Um, <laughs> Roberta Messix. Oh, you don't know her. No. Oh, Grandpa Al Lewis. <laughs> Grandpa oh. Munster. Oh, really? <laughs> Grandpa Munster. He had a comedy club in Staten Island for a while. <laughs> they... Why did he hate you? I'll players. tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> That's my <laughs> son. Right. Ben, you can find Jimmy just texted me a, like a weird old Grandpa Al 1 800 hear a ghost story uh, phone numbers. What? Remember remember when uh, those pay per, you know, yeah. yes. uh, 45 cents yeah. for the first minute, whatever. And they would just pull all these old stars out of their yeah. crypt and put that makeup on them and tell them just talk to the yeah. kids. And. And we'll give you a ten cents for every minute the kid right. stays on the on the line. He just sent me that because he knew I was in in, in terror of Grandpa <laughs> Al. Yeah. Is uh, it still up and running? <laughs> give a shot. So I have great. no idea where well, Jimmy call yeah. found this thing, but he he sent it to me anyway. What well, can I continue on this? Topic? He hit me. Sorry, okay. and Roberta hit me both in a in a Volvo station wagon. Oh. Both in the back seat. Just, There's a theme. Just wild hand, just <laughs> flailing, smack in the, the head. Same Volvo or. No, they didn't even know each other. See, in the old days, there's nobody really young except for the the, the guy who walked me in right. with the white the white Damn. glasses. Yeah, bye. yeah. So they kids used to come home and say the uh, Shemanskys. I'm pulling a, a name from my town. They, uh, let's make it, the Smiths. The Smiths hit me. Well, what did you do? Yeah. Right. I threw food at somebody. Oh. And then your your mom or dad would pick up the phone and they'd call the Smiths and go, "Thank you." Yeah. yeah. Thank you for hitting my. I mean, Takes a village. I would and I'm not, not saying I. What do I have to say? Condone? There has to be I some never sort of told. Way I never told okay. either one of my parents that I was hit by other people's parents. Mm. Yeah, I didn't then say you're one. Just making it worse. Yeah. Why do I want to relive this? What'd you do? It's going to be the first one. The worst is. Uh, mum's the word mm. with me. You, you, you could have dropped a digit on me. I wouldn't have said a thing. But Roberta felt bad. Mm. And she told my mom, yeah. and then it got weird. Yeah, you know what I mean—a little bit sexual. And I was just like, "Oh, can we this just go Move away, on. please?" I, How I, old were you? Thirty-four. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did, probably did, ten. Do you remember what you did? Yeah, I remember. I I, I deserved it. Okay. Well, yeah, of course. Grandpa Al will watch the. We'll watch him begging for money. Probably shot oh, no. in 1992. <laughs> yeah, flashbacks but, but, here. But, Brian, I don't know about you, but even just the thumbnail looks familiar. Yeah. Grandpa Al, I don't remember what I said because you didn't need to say anything for Grandpa <laughs> yeah. Al. He, he, a, he had a, a <laughs> can of whoop ass that was already half open <laughs> for, between his legs when he drove. You know well, what I mean? Like, he, that's how he rolled. Yeah. Roberta, I remember clearly okay. because I, I deserved it. Yeah, what'd you do? Well, I was playing that weird handsy slap game yep. with Monty, her son. You know, you yeah. massage you slap that no one knows the name of, no. but 
Yeah, slap it's game. slap or mm-hmm. sitting and no, it, trying it's, to. Look, you want to play this? Yeah, that's they, the name. Yeah, yeah they, put your hands. You put out. two hands on top of somebody else's hands and you try to flip them over and slap. Yeah, there's a name for it, but nobody, nobody knows, knows it. And uh, we're trying to do that. For a game that has been played endlessly by all generations of Americans, the fact that we do not have a title for it that anyone recognizes is is weird. Yeah. Here's the other thing that's weird. There are all these rules, like how much you can move the yeah. shoulder. Flinch. Is it a flinch? Yeah. Is it a balk? Is it a, I was the king of the same hand. Yeah. I was good at that. I was trying to distract Monty, so I tried to. <laughs> I tried to mimic Roberta's voice. Oh, boy. And, and I, she, she was like... You know, Monty, you know, is your seatbelt on? And then I was like, yeah, Monty. And it was like, smack. <laughs> I was just smack. I, my hands, ironically, were out. I could not protect myself. You know, I could not. Yeah. They right. say protect yourself at all times. Yeah. yeah. The slap that I thought was coming to the top of yeah. my hand just yeah. came across my face while my hands were out. It was right. like a tag team. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The family came That's for right. you. <laughs> Here's uh, Grandpa Al from... 1989? I don't know. During the Hiya, kids. height it's of the... me, your friend, Grandpa. I gotta tell you, I am starting a new club, and I want you to join. It's called the Junior Vampires of America. I mean, you'll hear scary monster stories. Now, to call, you gotta ask your parents' permission and call this phone number, 1-900-909-4300. You'll hear all about my monster friends, learn how to get a free vampire patch and a list of special vampire tricks and secrets. So call 1-900-909-4300. Learn how to scare your friends, even yourself. Join Grandpa Junior Vampires of America Club, and I will make you a junior vampire. Hey, kids, call 1-900-909-4300. <laughs> I'm sure that resonated with the kids of the late 1-900-909-4300 <laughs> to hear Grandpa's scary stories and join the Junior Vampires Club. Just two dollars a first minute, forty-five cents each additional. Ooh, Ask sick. mom or dad first. Um, I'm sorry to say that this phone number is no longer uh, mm. doesn't work. Can, can I just say this? Yeah. Is that the original cameo? Oh mm. sure. Maybe. I just joined cameo today. Mm. I just finally. Are you on there? I'm in a cover band for the band cameo, but I'm not. <laughs> yeah. I'm not doing. I I do it once in a while. So yeah. you can turn it on and off. Yeah, you can turn it on and off. I'm doing it. We've got this Teen Wolf movie coming out. Oh, so I thought right. for two months, I'll as coach, I'll right. just blow the whistle and get call yeah. people stupid, right, for money. Because then it's not really me; it's coach. Yeah, that's uh, one of your most recognizable roles, right? right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And that's why my nephew should not have said what he said to me. Right. I'm a big deal. These kids need to realize I'm a big deal. <laughs> You're Do Coach they... Finstock? I'm Coach Finstock. Are it's you big... really? Yeah, when you see me in the public, it's like... Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Coach Finstock was the best character of the whole first movie. Well, Loved him. Watch the TV show. Everything, Everything else, else is cream cheese. cheese. Yeah, we said that. Yeah, <laughs> oh. I'm How old were you? We just, we just shot the movie. No, but weren't you... Oh, you weren't the original. No, no, no. I'm oh, sorry. No, okay, we, sorry. we did, uh, believe it or not, 100 episodes. Wow. For what? It was on MTV. No, I mean, why? Ne- yeah. <laughs> why? No. For what? For a reason. <laughs> to what end? For no. money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for fame. For address. You know why? So I can get booked at the Jimmy Kimmel there Comedy Club. That's and right. it's a big deal when I walk out in, in uh, Cirque du Soleil on my trapeze. So I fly out and do jokes. Yeah, did- I mean. Did you guys ever, speaking of, I don't know why the 1900 ones, they used to have the sexy ones. Mm-hmm. That oh, would be sure. the advertiser, yep. advertisement at the end of the um, porn movies or at the beginning, maybe, yeah. as you could call in. Just, but there were a lot of them. The ones I remember, I don't know. You guys tell me what you think of this. Uh, yeah, porn's fine, but somehow I like the porn commercial more than the. Porn, huh. the one nine hundred number thing. Yeah, because I used to look at it. You're a fast finisher. And she was, <laughs> she would be blowing a guy and then taking a break and talking to you, <laughs> and then blowing a guy. And I, I remember when I was like, what? Rent the tape. I was like twenty five. Yeah. She'd be like blowing a guy, and she'd be like, oh yeah. And then she'd pull the guy's dick out of her mouth. <laughs> she'd go, hey, 
I've been thinking about you, and I'm like, well, really? What the fuck? What the fuck's, what's <laughs> going on here in Never between once blowing off guns? camera. Hey, Ash, come back to work. <laughs> yeah. Never once. She, she'd be blowing the dude, then yeah. she'd be talking to me, saying she misses me, yeah. and she thinks I'm sexy, and she wishes I would call her because she's lonely. And she's looking right at you. <laughs> and then also, what about the point of view of the guy who's being blown? Like, who yeah. are you talking to? Yeah. Right. Why are you soliciting other dudes? Why I am th- I being cuckolded? I thought we had something yeah. here. And they weren't ethical like grandpa grandpa's like ask your mom and yeah. dad if you can call right these and, people are like call in <laughs> and then you call and you know they're pulling this to get the minutes rack yeah. the minutes going they're like uh hold on who's who is it oh it's adam uh, okay adam hold on a second it's a little hot in here i'm gonna turn the heat down and take 30 seconds to do that mm-hmm. i'm gonna have some water mm-hmm. yeah yeah how's your day going well, i'm making a denver water. omelet yeah <laughs> so you're kind of right in the middle of something here Shopping but we some can, onions keep, t- we can keep talking yeah. this is it's never timely to bring this up but certainly these days um however that being said i don't know if orny's ever heard um the sex caller talking about the holocaust oh man hmm. that something is something that we might need to revisit we had a thing where a sex caller <laughs> called in and to Loveline many years ago and she said the guys are coming too fast and I'm losing money <laughs> and I said because you you're, you're overdoing it yeah. right yeah. you know what I mean yeah. you go you know I'm six foot three blonde with a double yeah. D cup <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. you know, say you got a little back knee or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, slow it down. Like, slow it yeah. down a little bit. And uh, for have some any kids, do you have any daughters? <laughs> yeah, for a some, few. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I yeah. got stretch marks for days. Yeah, I got the scars to prove it. Right yeah. next to me. <laughs> I said, I, I slid into this thing where I was like, subliminally bring up stuff like Vietnam uh-huh. or the Holocaust or yeah. something that might yeah. slow it down right. a little bit. But she didn't have a lot of nuance. She didn't know. I don't think she knew what subliminally meant. Yeah. She didn't know what it meant, and right. I don't think she knew what the Holocaust no, was either. Very much not. Although, I'm sure if it was explained to her, she would then deny it. Yeah. Uh-huh. But I like well to said. think she's a pre-Holocaust <laughs> denier. Yeah. Like if you knew well what said. this was, you would you would, well, you I was, would deny it. I was going to say I haven't heard the call yet, but I would suspect nowadays it yeah. may make some men come faster. That's true. Oh, that's, that's actually yeah. true. That's Might right. She's actually ahead of her time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, ye may drop well. a load. I know, Ben, you can scowl around the internet They're and see if you can her. find Somebody it. Somebody offered We're to looking. introduce me to him. Really? Yeah. You seem disgusted. Well, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> You're Jewish, right? Hey, yeah. Look Whoa. at my shirt. I understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I w- that's what I learned in the last show, that you were Jewish. I didn't realize that. No. And Adam, you're Jewish, too. We'll take no. it. No. He actually think, gets quite offended people when think people think, think that. A, well, why would you want to be l- 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 lumped in with the chosen people? <laughs> no. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> no, I'm not Jewish. No. I'm I'm Italian, and I've said it many times. I work construction. I taught boxing, and no one ever thought I was Jewish. And then I got into comedy, and everyone, well, you're Jewish, right? Yeah. But it's just it's yeah. the job you take. Yeah. You should have named your son Avraham then. Avraham. Oh wait, he named him Santino, so it wouldn't happen anymore. I'm tired would, of being mistaken yeah. for a Jew. I got to tell you something. No, and I don't like no Jewish person. I hate the hard Jew. Yeah. No Jewish person would look at Adam and say that's a Jewish person. We just wouldn't. Yeah. You wouldn't. You do not know because what the Jews do or the Jewish people is we're sent to camp. Early mm-hmm. on, and you see every archetype of Jewish person. <laughs> so I can pick camp, them right. out from a mile away. That's, that's the right. red-headed Jew. That's the Jew that walks like that. That's the overconfident Jew. He's a Kohen. Jew. He's like, a Sephardic. Even Bob Dylan, as cool as Bob Dylan is, there are times I see him on stage and go, the Jewishness just came out. Yeah. yeah. He just showed a little Jewishness. Mm, yeah. And it's not a bad thing, Mm-mm. you know? No. I mean, it looks like you think it's a bad thing. <laughs> no, I just think... <laughs> I just, like, oh, keep, I just keep oh, no. thinking about him singing at the Grammys like eight years ago. I ain't going to work on Maggie's farm oh, no I more. Oh, I love that. But I thought he's the worst farm hand ever. Like Bob Dylan threatening yeah. not to work on your farm yeah. is the best day you've ever had. You, can, I, can I give he, a... He, you, uh, 30 Bob Dylans couldn't do the work of one Mexican on Maggie's farm. <laughs> <laughs> the idea that he's threatening uh, the, the, the little spindly guy who couldn't move a bale of hay if he gave him a forklift. He was folksy. I, I'm saying bullet dodge, Maggie. 
Can I, can I give a clip suggestion for the Please. booth? Yeah, of course. And I think you'll love this, too, sure. and I don't think anybody has seen this before. But let's look on YouTube for Bob Dylan singing Hava Nagila. I would love that because didn't he convert or make like a Christian but album? But he's singing it with Orthodox Jews. Oh, that I got to see. Uh, on a telethon for like a local New York right. station. Like the, it's always for the Chabad. It's a, it, it might be Chabad, but it's like, uh, which is a whole nother level yeah. of, you can know. I say Can I say this? When you get to this point in your career, like Bob Dylan... Mm-hmm. When you're asked to perform live and a wall of humanity comes and joins you on stage, yeah. you know, you got Tower of Power and this stable and singers over there and 13 guys from 15 bands with yeah. 15 banjos. Chicago's like, horn section. Yeah, it's right. like a little tell that maybe you've lost your fastball. Yeah. Like, then it'll just hand you an acoustic guitar and go, the stool's over there, Bob. Like, there's a wall, a yeah. sea of humanity behind him. Oh, we have Tony the, Bennett, we love Lady Gaga this, to do this. this. Uh, yeah, when you see this clip, you'll say, no, this guy could never lose. Well, we have the love line. Line oh, audio good, 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 good. ready. And then so, we go into Bob Dylan. <laughs> then we go into Bob Dylan. Bring. Bring. Hi, how you doing? Ooh, hi, what's your name? I'm Sugar. Sugar, Who are you? I'm Ace. Hey, Ace. Yeah, what are you wearing? Mm, well, I'm wearing a nice black garter. Mm-hmm. Mm, just thinking about the Holocaust right now. <laughs> <laughs> She's good. Oh, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, burn those shoes. Gas them in the shower, baby. Yeah. yeah. I'm sending you my bill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Send them on the train to crack. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, that was her. I'm trying to explain subliminal, but she didn't really. You know, she takes notes well. Yeah. <laughs> She's you know, coachable. She didn't dance around it. She didn't go, I'm thinking about six million yeah. no. dead Jews. Ooh. Ooh. Before, Ooh. We, before we get into Orny's clip, fun fact about that call, number one, I screened that call back in the day. That was like 2002, 2003. Uh, Tom Arnold was the guest. It was late in the show. Might have been the last call. I think it was the, the show. last call. Might have been the last call of the show. And uh, everyone was laughing so hard. I took a picture of Tom after the show, and I will post that picture. Amazing. Mm. Yeah, he went, Tom Arnold went ballistic. <laughs> Here's, <laughs> here's something else I just realized. My entire life, like I changed my name uh, because it was very identifiable as being Jewish. And I was self-conscious. I was made fun of when I was a kid. I talk about it on my, my last comedy special. They'd say, oh, you're, you're Jewish. You must be good with money. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm five. I don't right. have money. <laughs> right, right. You know, so I changed it. But now, and I said on the special, I, this is from a few years ago, I'm finally comfortable saying that I'm Jewish. And right in time for the new wave of anti-Semitism. <laughs> I know. Fantastic. Yeah. You got, you yeah. know, like I've lost some of your viewers already today. You, you, uh, you funny. essentially, no no what happened to you is what happened to the bass player in Spinal Tap when he was supposed to emerge yeah. from that <laughs> the cocoon. cocoon. Yeah. You sat in that cocoon <laughs> yeah. guarding your Judum yeah. for all those years. And yeah. then the second you finally pried it open and stepped out, everyone else went right back in and it shut right yeah. on your hand yeah. and it, i wasn't ashamed of it i just didn't want to lead with it right. i didn't want it to be the first thing that they thought right you know i was like let them hate me first for me <laughs> then hate me for being jewish yeah for, i hate you for your words not yeah. for your heritage <laughs> your Bob, and Bob Dylan. yeah what year is this from <clears throat> we'll figure it out it goes 89 up there it says 89 but it can't wow he looks angry is that Harry Dean Stanton? Harry Dean yeah. Stanton. Always looks like he doesn't necessarily know where he is. Wait, Harry Dean Stanton's Jewish? I was going to say. Honorary? I love when John Popper makes fun of Bob Dylan's <laughs> playing of the harmonica. That's my favorite. Oh, look, far be it for me to <laughs> kick a Jew when he's down, but this is this song is your flaunt. You know what I mean? You got to do better in the it's dessert true. department. We you do know what have I mean? Like songs. you need something that's a little better than the Harry Dean Stanton. I didn't see that coming. I knew it was for Chabad. What's with the guy in the middle? No yarmulke. A little yeah. uh, attitude problem there. Look, Bob just walks off before the song's over. Wow. He's clearly angry. Well, I mean, I look, think that's, I think that's just 
I think it's just Bob Dylan's demeanor is not wanting to be wherever he is. Yeah. Okay, sure. That's their look during It's rock and roll. Yeah, 1989. So, wow. so it is. Yeah. 25th uh, Shabbat Telethon. Yeah. Chabad. Chabad. Shabbat. I don't yeah. know. Uh, don't get Chabad and reading. Shabbat mixed up. Oh, what I say? You know, Chabad. Chabad. I think it was? there's another version where he's singing. Mm. Well, he's he's obviously you know down with the cause. Well, then he put out a Christmas album. Yeah, he, I thought it was like a. Christmas. Here comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa Claus. Da, 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 da. I did. I thought ah. he converted like to Christianity. Oh, I don't know. We got him back. Okay. We got him. Oh, back. good. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Orny will hang out and do some news with us. Yeah, I'd love to. First, uh, let me tell you about uh, Tommy John. Yeah, I'm wearing mine right now. Weather's changing out there, and uh, you need to stay fresh. That's right. And uh, you don't want those old school uh, underpants you've been wearing. Go with Tommy John. I actually wore mine in the pool the other day, and then I air dried them outside and then put them back on this morning. Breathable, lightweight fabric, four times the stretch of competing brands. No wedgie guarantee, no rolling waistbands, legs that never ride up, and horizontal quick-draw fly as well. Hammock pouch support and uh, stops the awkward swing and slap. Over over 18 million pairs sold. Tommy John doesn't have customers. They have fanatics. I'm telling you, you go with the Tommy John. Even, even I'll go right past in my drawer. I don't have the heart to throw away those Calvin Klein midways because they were like 35 bucks. 10 years ago, but uh, I go right for the Tommy John every time. Best pair you'll ever wear. It's free. Guarantee. Right, Dawson? Go to TommyJohn.com slash Adam right now for 20% off your first order. 20% off at TommyJohn.com slash Adam. TommyJohn.com slash Adam. Seaside for details. All right. We'll take a quick break. Be back with the news and Orny right after this. Well, we have a new leader in the clubhouse for terror on the airlines, but... We don't have any video of it, which I don't know. It's suspect because we always have video, but it's worth talking about. A woman who claimed to be uh, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie's niece injured six deputies after she was kicked off a Spirit Airlines flight on Thanksgiving Day. It's 25-year-old Shannon Epstein. Uh, she was asked to get off the plane in New, all right, <laughs> in New Orleans after she asked a Latino family sitting nearby if they were smuggling cocaine. When deputies arrived... Oh, were they? It's funny. Were yeah, they? Let never, them answer. Never got a clear answer. Mm. Uh, so when the deputies arrived, she uh, refused to get off the plane. She started getting wild in the jet bridge, became extremely they, combative. Well, so were the deputies called because she asked the question? I think so. You know, Like she was harassing off, people? It, you don't... It's fentanyl. It's not cocaine. That's right. It's in case anyone's right. thinking about questioning yeah. any Hispanic people on sure. a Spirit Airlines got flight, it. you go with fentanyl right. every if time. If you can afford cocaine, aren't you on Delta? Yeah, you're not or? on. Thank you. You're just muling it, Orny. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They're it's just over, mule. They're it's an overhead oh. corner. Yeah. Did she? Maybe she saw something and she's saying something. No, maybe. Oh, well, don't point. you remember that movie Maria Full of Grace, where mm. they? I think she was in Mexico and they make you swallow the balloons of heroin, mm -hmm. and then it burst while she was on the flight. Mm. Some tough stuff. Yeah. Uh, so in the scuffle, she injured six deputies, biting one, breaking the skin, kicking another one in the crotch. Uh, the sheriff's office said that Epstein shouted that the deputies were going to lose their jobs and end up in jail because she was related to powerful people who were friends with former President Trump. Uh, she didn't name Chris Christie, I think, in the moment, but that's who she was referring to. She was handcuffed to a wheelchair. She was getting so wild so uh, that she could be moved to airport security, continued shouting vulgarities and trying to bite everybody. Uh, they booked Epstein with six counts of battery on a police officer, three of disturbing the peace, one of resisting arrest by force and one of remaining after forbidden. I guess that means when you won't get off the plane. She paid a bail of about 11 grand and was released. And uh, there you go. Does the name Epstein need any more bad <laughs> <Yeah>. press? <laughs> it's up here. Yeah. Yeah. It's I, just, I can't even watch yeah. Welcome Back Kata anymore no. without uh, yeah. having, a, having a this flashback. This took me to Pedophile Island. Yeah. The name. Right. The, they just had a story, and I, like, I don't even know what to believe. Well, this one, I believe. It was, uh, I think it was Odell Beckham fell asleep on oh, a yeah. plane and they had to mm -hmm. they had to walk him off with guards and stuff and it's like I'll, I'll tell you this I'll tell you this part that I would appreciate that I, I wish 
the people in charge would do. At a certain point, when it becomes clear that they're going to remove you, Mm -hmm. if you could just go, I will fasten my seatbelt and not say another word if you don't do this, they always go too late. Yeah, And it's like, I get where they're coming from. On the other hand, uh, we don't have to do this. I can do it. She doesn't sound like she's ever going to do it. And then I don't know what this, I'm always torn because like Odell Beckham's like, I wasn't doing anything. I was sleeping on the plane. And then they're like, you were asked to put your seatbelt on 13 Mm. times and you didn't do it, which sounds like it. On the other hand, those people on that plane want, once, once you throw the switch, you cannot Oh, undo God, it. No. It's mm-hmm. just now, You're now off. it is. Yes. It, it shall be. And that's what's happening. And the more you fight it, the more the charges go up and they, the more the plane turns digging, against you. Digging in. Yes. yes. So I don't even know what Odell's thing was. Fell asleep. Couldn't, wouldn't have his belt on. Fell asleep, I'm making air quotes. I, it passed sounded, out. It sounded like he had a few drinks and passed out. Couldn't and somebody just buckle tr- it for him? Uh, I guess, but it, uh, I don't know in this day and age if you want to be fiddling around a man of color's junk when he's passed out. You you know what I mean? Especially after, um, is it Deshaun Watson? Yeah, Uh, Deshaun Watson. uh, Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Right, right. Turnabout's fair play. I get it. I was rooting pretty hard for him Sunday. You know, the flying has gotten, it's just bad. Yeah. But when's the last time, honestly, Orny, when's the last time you flew? Coach. Flew last? Oh, not coach. coach. <laughs> okay, I didn't know you were saying coach. No, I'll tell you, they're doing something now, which bothers me. Mm. There's no room for the bags and coach. They're bringing them to first class. Mm. No. We're not paying to have our stuff cramped. The lady, the flight attendant said, do you mind? She goes, whose gray knapsack? I go, it's mine. She goes, could you put it under your seat? No. Outrageous. I go, no. You're not paying an extra grand to put that under your seat. No. I've, I've found that if you do fly first class, the bins are all filled with the shit. I mean, this is a, let's talk about this for a second. Because mm-hmm. um, I had, I made this analogy on the show years and years and years ago, but I haven't brought it up since, which is, but, but it's more sort of global, right? So we are now, we've now decided that anybody who has money is the enemy. Every single thing I've read or heard about Twitter and Elon Musk, like rich, rich guy. We got one rich guy. He's a rich guy. Yeah. Jeff Bezos is rich. He owns a newspaper. That's how rich guys work. They they own shit. But it's like, we got a rich guy. This rich, they'll work in white every once in a while. Like a rich white guy is going to control. Yeah, that's that's what rich people do. They control things. They own teams and airlines and newspapers and Mm -hmm. online platforms. But we've gotten this crazy with this rich thing, right? And First class was first class. It was first yeah. class. You didn't enter first class if you didn't have a first class Not ticket. Use the bathroom. They fucking put a curtain up and they put a rope up and you sure as fuck. When I started flying, if I thought I was going to dump my Samsonite off over the first <laughs> class guys bin, now it is frequently full when I show up because I like to get on at the end yeah. of the flight. Let everyone else go fight it out. Uh, but I get it's it's all full. You would never do that. You would never shit up the first class head. You you didn't deserve that. But right. see now it's it. now it's like fuck this guy. But again, you don't want to pay for the ticket. It, it's become a metaphor for our society, which is you don't want you, to pay to check your who luggage. Wa- who wants to complain the whole time? Doesn't want to buy a first class ticket or pay for it or have the bathroom yeah. or pay to check the right. luggage? But you're willing to then use it. Well, and I thought, what is different than this? Go and and people. They're kind of split about it. They're like, and they don't even enforce it. People mm-hmm. just walk right through, mm-hmm. go use the first class. Then and they I come go, up the whole flight and, and right. start playing with stuff in their bag. They go, they're like junks in your face. All I'm saying is, is this. If you, the analogy was, if you go to Dodger Stadium, you can sit out in the bleachers for 18 bucks or you can get a skybox for 10 grand. Mm-hmm. What if someone from the bleachers walked into your skybox? Like, I take a dump. <laughs> You'd be like, no, Get I paid out. 10 grand for yeah. this thing. It's like, hey, man, what are you so uptight for? Like, what's wrong? Like, isn't, it, isn't every toilet for every anus? Like, yeah. that would seem ridiculous, but it's really just the same thing that applies, which is I paid more money than you 
And this is part of what I get, but not, not anymore. waiting for you to leave the bathroom. No, the flight attendants are so afraid to get involved right. with yeah. anything. They're so afraid to say to somebody, hey, the coach bins are full. Mm-hmm. And I do still fly coach. I flew, uh, I'll fly uh, coach to Vegas this oh, week wow. or on Southwest. Yeah. So, you know, I do. But I know the rules. I stay out. I stay out of first if I'm not in first. Right. There's, you know, there's, the, but the flight attendants are so afraid. They just sit there. They, they don't care if someone's kicking your seat. They don't oh, care God, about anything. No. And they're catching on. I don't think they're doing anything about it during the flight. But Adam, I forgot to tell you, one of the announcements when we were leaving Hawaii, because I was in the fucking back of the, pl- way back of the plane. They said, um, please, in interest of safety, please only use the bathroom assigned to your, your cl- section. Your, cla- your cabin. That's your, your ca- cabin. Your I class. hear it all the time. <laughs> right. I quote it. I stand up. Not your cabin. Not your cabin. We a baby in first class, okay, oh. which is that's fine. Yeah. But while we're boarding, the parents are holding the kid up like it's a trophy, mm-hmm. and everybody's stopping it's like and the go, Lion King. Look at the cute, go, 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 go. I gotta be honest with you, this kid was average looking, not a good looking wow. kid, yeah. and it was holding up the book. Bu- so the bu- I hit the buzzer, <laughs> called the lady, the flight attendant, I go, Hey, tell them to put the kid down till mm. we board. Mm-hmm. The plane takes off. They let them march up and down the aisle and get all the attention they want. Mm. But we got to get right. we got to get back to Los Angeles. That's right. I'm the only one with common sense on this plane. Yes. With the balls to say it. Mm-hmm. Somebody had to say it. Yeah. Kid was average. Average. Five. At, at best. Six. At best. The, wasn't like it didn't have the you know the, the sparkle it factor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. a Gerber baby. Mm-hmm. I looked at. It, I said, put that kid just. That's Ugh. a coach-looking mm. baby. Yeah. yeah. And the parents were average, too. So I knew it wasn't like this, mm. you know. This their kin. And people are afraid to say it. Not all these kids are good-looking. And we need to stop pandering yeah. to these well, kids. Well, why, you know, we shouldn't... Tre- why no, by, we, by the way, let me just finish by saying this. Before please. Again. Sorry to interrupt on your own show. No. But why are we so fascinated and excited about kids? I, they're pretty easy to make. No. I think we figured that yeah. out. You make it by mistake. Yeah. yeah. Just don't, don't pull to. out. And, right. and not only that, but uh, it's probably a bad thing to be completely focused on the aesthetic from zero to four years old. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just constantly talking about how pretty you are. And mm-hmm. Look at those eyes. Mm-hmm. All that stuff we try. We try to create a society that doesn't focus on the aesthetic, but yet they get a mouthful of it from the time they're born to about the time they you know, hit the first grade. It's nothing but yeah. people leaning Aren't over them talking about yeah. their aesthetic. It's only fans grooming. That's oh, right. Wow. It's grooming. Yeah. Setting them up to That's expect right. that they deserve. And this kid, this kid knew. The mm-hmm. little kid was saw everybody, and then the kid made eye contact with me and mm. knew I saw through it. And then uh, the kid yeah. knew. Wow. Yeah. knew. The, the kid, the kid, the kid knows the kid's not as hot as other... Like, yeah. you know, when the kid's in the carriage, passing other kids in the carriage, you know as a kid whether you got it. Oh, yeah. Right. And so when the kid saw, you know, Uncle Orny sitting there in his seat, and I just gave him the look. Yeah. Mm. He goes, you're right. Yeah, oh, knowing I saw, that. I'm not going to work on me. Yeah. 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 yeah, I could see that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you think he knew you were Jewish? <laughs> I think... Uh, I don't know. Do you think that factored it? I'm going back in the Jew closet. <laughs> Go back in the Jew closet. <laughs> Let things cool down just yeah. a little bit. Yeah. That's it's gotten all. bad fast. I know. It really has. There Let was even cool a, a Department of Homeland Security said, uh, Jews, uh, keep your head on a swivel. Mm. That's I, I just got an alert. Yeah, I mean, NBC the News rise that. in anti-Semitism just on this podcast. I <laughs> was... <laughs> I would not put on ceremonial anything Jewish and walk uh, up and down, you know, New York City these days or Fairfax. It I, makes me I, would, so, I wouldn't do that. My mom in Kansas, I don't know if she wants me talking about this, but whatever. Well, she was also there when, when the, the shooter shot up our Jewish community center and she was there. She just took off her fucking Star of David. She's like, I don't feel comfortable wearing this right now. And I was like, fuck that. I'm getting a shirt that says latkes and dreidels. Like, I, this is so maddening. This is like... It just feels ridiculous, I guess, until it happens to me. It'll feel ridic- it feels ridiculous. Mm. Yeah, but these people don't know what a locky is that's or a true. dreidel. That's I mean, true. that's not, you know. Yeah. You're reminding me i got to get my Italian horn out for the holidays. <laughs> that's right. I can that see it. That was a good looking. Yeah, with a thicket of, of chest hair yeah, that, tangled up in it. Uh, with, with that Italian horn medallion hit. Mm. 79 or something. John Travolta. It, it hit hard, yeah. man. I don't know what Saturday it was. Fever, I but, would imagine. But uh, I should get mine out. Please Remember do. the clatter ring? 
Mm, no. It was like an Irish ring. Maybe it was just a Boston thing. Oh, mm. I know. Am what I saying it about. wrong? I think it's yes. It, no, you're right. You're I right. I remember the mood ring. Yeah, this is the clatter ring. You've seen this, and you wear it one way depending if you're available. It's or not. like a promisey ring, a virginy ring, right? It has a heart in it. Yeah, and but it you depends don't... what what way the heart is facing. Mm-hmm, that's it. Yeah, yeah, it's an Irish You've heart thing. This. And you, good for scoring or like. Well, you'd you'd know if it was it, there was an end. Right. You know what I mean? If it was even on the table. This is basically the, when the, the gays adopted the bandana system. Right. I was thinking. Right. Is that what this ring is? A straight version of that? Like, I don't know if <laughs> sexual preference has anything to do with this. But what I'm thinking is we get you a few of these rings. Mm. You hand them over to the people that you think you've crossed over to. Charlene yeah, Tilton. Yeah. You let them know. You go, mm-hmm. you let me know. Look yeah. at that. It looks like a chess piece. Right. Which way you're going to wear this. And then that'll be my indication you put a di- you put it on a direction that says single or spoken for I think, or how's it work i think the Virgin. heart facing your heart probably means i don't you're, know you're, something the, yeah <laughs> what's, the cab go- Gina, off. what's going on with chimes are they still a thing like wind chimes no like chimes like your kid's name and oh, charms charms, <laughs> charms. Uh, chimes oh, yeah charms charms are all the rage because you are they still, still hot on T- tiffany and Ugh. david yearman and all the all the uh jewelry sites that's big to get that engraved charm you get your kid you get, right Brian? you get to, like your my dog. mom has any number of charms really it's a different generation than obviously gina but the, my mom it's i imagine a big amongst your mom and her friends yeah the tiffany charms with the engraving yeah. That's a big thing. That's a kids' thing. names. Right. Oh, okay. The birth dates. Mm. It's the only way I remember that shit. Mm-hmm. I had lucky chimes for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> chimes. <laughs> They're magically <Chimes>. delicious. <laughs> well, let's talk. I don't know if you guys have seen this new trailer for Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Do we even no. call him Prince Harry anymore? I hate God. Do I oh, hate you're going to hate this trailer. God, I'm going to show I you a minute. I haven't seen it. I'm excited. Uh, it's dropped. And the couples take some, they take some shots at the royal family. That seems like the whole purpose of this. Quick, quick question. Yeah. This is for what? A show? Netflix. A movie? It's oh. a two-parter okay. on Netflix. They got a uh, Wait a minute. Is it Hulu or Netflix? Netflix. Netflix. I have it as Netflix. They got a hundred million dollar deal. Poof. Uh, I, I don't know why it. I hate them so much. Well, I, you'll know when okay. I play this for you. But okay. it's called Harry and Meghan. And it shows a lot of the drama unveiling behind the scenes. Harry talks about the hierarchy of the family, claiming people inside the camp were leaking stories about him and Meghan. Meghan claims everything changed after she got you know, married into the family, the hatred, the racism. This is a minute-long trailer. Enjoy. Ah, mm. yeah. So it's going to be two volumes, one December 8th, one December 15th. A, a pox upon anyone who watches that shit. These are the, they, they, this is everything that's wrong with everyone under 40. Mm. These two. Mm. Fucking richest, most privileged people on the planet just walking around with, an, with issues. Uh, and but, So this thing of we were this, we were that scared. She... She is an ingrate, which I, to, to me, the worst, I, I hate it when people have a crazy life of privilege and then just never, they're always put upon, they're talking about there's a target on her back. She always does the thing. She, ugh. Ugh. Well, don't forget about the, the bowing conversation that you loved so much when she goes, I couldn't, I just couldn't understand it. I couldn't wrap my head around it when Harry said, you know, you're going to meet my grandmother, who's the queen of England. And, you know, do you know how to bow? And she's like, why would I bow? This is grandma. This is they're, your grandma. They're both such useless, self-entitled sacks of shit with a hundred million dollars. They've never stopped talking about how tough their life is and how they're attacked and they're hurt. A hundred million bucks deal from Netflix. It's I a hope lot they of... fucking lose every penny on those two idiots and then also kill so it's the same with the obamas like they got a hundred million dollar producing deal what the fuck do they know about producing anything or creating anything which just kind of show they just want everyone's name on everything sure. mm-hmm. now but it's so gross yeah. yuck oh you love him Ugh. um let's talk about somebody who i don't is... know do i hate him more or her more because they're both fucking horrible i think you know the answer to her that. Mm. Do you think, I hate her because she's always doing the race thing. Can I ask you but, to yeah. have an open mind and okay. perhaps watch this documentary and then I will watch it. Yes, I, I will watch it. I watch Michelle Obama's, you know, forum for women just it's, just to have a fucking it's all laugh. all we can ask. And then I at the end, it. if you want to declare that you like this promo more than the show, Ugh. much like the sex hotlines where you right. liked. The- <laughs> What's she doing with that other dude's dick in her mouth? <laughs> 
Meghan That's Markle? That's what I'm saying. Well, what kind of acting is that? It's just Okay, so what's going to happen is, everybody quiet on the set, she's going to be going down on you, and then it's important you stay hard. She's going to stop, <laughs> look at the camera, give some information. If you cut, you got to stay hard. You can't lose. Where's the other actor? No, no, I'm good. Do I need makeup for this? Do no, it's makeup? just you're I'm... actually out of the shot. Oh. The only thing we need is your pecker. If you could keep your pecker hard at all. No, trim? I'm sorry. Your agent said that you had an unbelievable ability to sit there during copy and stay hard. Lucky hey, uh, do we need to lob him up or can I boom him? We're going to boom him. It's going to be fine. He just needs Does to. Does he have uh, dialogue? He's going to grunt. Uh, if he could maybe improv at the end, like do it. Or Is this Italian horn going to reflect off the lights or take it off? You guys are worrying about way too Put much. Some. If we could just do one. Why don't Sorry, we do a rehearsal? I, I'm getting locked out over here. Can you can you can stop lo- yo, keep sucking. Put some gaffer okay. tape over the Italian horn. It'll, okay, it'll yeah, knock the glare off. Yeah. Cut. we got to change the film. Does she go, need oh, to be mic Because she. She doesn't have a shirt on. Yeah. Can I boom her? You can just uh, boom her. Over. <laughs> I'll boom her. Yeah, let's boom everybody. If okay. we could just try one, hey, everybody. If, if the boom mic dips into the shot, don't suck it. That's can, just the boom oh, mic. Not everything that's longer than it is wide and black is a cock, Got okay? It. okay. Yeah. I've had you're this problem only, in other sets before. You're only uh, interested in sucking my cock. <laughs> you don't want anything else in your mouth. Wait, but the copy says I want to suck the, the, the viewers. Okay, can we have quiet on the set? Can everybody I, back to first. First position. If we can take 52, remember, don't say Holocaust this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't I don't want to do, you know, I know I'm only the boom mic holder. Yeah. But I will do lobs as well. Anyway, forget about my credentials. They're not wearing your, any clothes. Your inner monologue yeah. is, I'm sucking off this guy's hog, but I wish it was yours. Copy I don't want to direct this from the... From the from the sound station over here, but yeah. is that did I capture you, ex- the ex- essence of what this is? It, it, it's for you, the viewer. The viewer should see the pecker as their pecker. As you can see, we've cast a very generic. Hold on, pecker. What? Yes, you have what I would describe as an ordinary run of the true. mill, not too big, not too small, certainly not thick. It's above average for sure. Not, not memorable. Not memorable. Shut the fuck up, <laughs> hey. uh, Oh, if we could not fight, if we could just get through this. Okay, hey, you, the, want, you want to take? What are the lines this? again? What okay, are the lines? Hold the lines on. Are... Oh, my God. <laughs> Call now. I can't wait to have y- your packer in my mouth. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, hey. I'm sorry. The the ad agency just uh, inf- asked me if we could do a take. The, his pecker is so small. We actually think Wait you could do it fuck? with it in hey, your mouth. I, I, I think I, think actually I, think I, have, a, I have a solution to this problem. <laughs> And by the way, in, in case you think I just fell off the turnip truck, I just did Grandpa Al Lewis's 900 commercial. <laughs> so I have worked with some pretty big too. outfits. Did you get hit? I just did the boom. Okay, but did he hit anybody on the set? He punched a grip, but okay, I'm not here to tell tales <laughs> out of school because right. I'm a professional. Yeah. Look, um, I got a bigger than average hog, mm. and it stays hard all day. Mm. I'm hard now. Okay. And oh, this is a union game. Anyone can anyone hold a boom mic, set? but not everyone can hold a boner I think anyone, over 53 I, I think, takes. Well, I think you've proven you haven't. I, what if I just slide in? They switch. Is there any value? How would you feel? <laughs> I want to get the actress's Thank opinion you. about having two men feet to feet. You are in the middle. You go back and forth. Oh, that's good because I can use one of them like a phone. Yes. Like, call now. Right. Right. That's I would good. S- yes. Yeah, yeah I, I wasn't mean. suggesting that. Two men are going to shoot me here and then over there, I assume? Like no, two- you're going to be feet to feet laying down. She's the star. Yeah, yeah. you some, some yeah. trick photography to make two of me. We were talking about the old swap out. Oh, not, you actually not, want to replace? We're not going down the double dong highway, if that's what but, you're asking. Oh. I was saying we swap my rock hard piece of sculpted alabaster out for this flaccid wind. Can I see it? <laughs> it's out. Let me see. Hey, buddy, you're oh, talking on. a lot of shit for a <laughs> of weird. Let me take a look. Oh, that is pretty yeah. impressive. It actually is very impressive. What's your name? I forgot your name again, sir. Uh, Rocco. Rocco. Yeah. Um, do you know how to hold a boom mic? Anyone I mean, can hold a boom mic. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Rocco. I, yeah. I told this to you using the gig. I don't think I'm allowed to touch that boom how mic. How about this? Is this a crazy thought? We mic Rocco's pecker, <laughs> and he booms, booms the... Then you feel like you're part of it. Do you know what I mean? I'll boom whatever you want me to boom, buddy. <laughs> I'm Rocco. This is not a union house. 
Uh, you used Grandpa the word grip. Al shoot was. Yeah, Grandpa uh, Al had a grip. That was a union. Sh- was, was there craft union. services? Well, fuck yeah, it's wow. union. Extras? Uh, no, we didn't need extras on that shoot. Look, I don't care whose cock is in my mouth, but I got another shoot in 15. Okay, but are you going to get your lines right? Let me hear the lines okay. again. <clears throat> I call now because I wish it was your packer in my mouth. Okay, could you do it with more conviction? You're sort of looking up. You're kind of lo- it looks yeah. like you're thinking Hold on, about let me, your let me lines. Grab this boom mic here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> don't dip it. Call now because I want your packer in my mouth. Okay. Well, I need you to think about little boys picking up the phone and calling you. No, no that's, that's oh, okay. The I got it. I got it. No, no, no. I got it. You're thinking about grandpa. No, no, that's oh, a good. Oh, that's a good. Oh, that's a good. Oh, that's a good I want you to think of perverted little men boys. like okay. Marco. I'd boys. like to point out that I didn't start to go soft until he mentioned little boys. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> True. I just came, but I'll be back. Okay. You said I'm talking to little boys. Is there a way for us to redirect the calls from grandpa's line? <laughs> To this lot. I think you're overthinking this. Okay. I shouldn't have brought that up. Go ahead. Okay, little boys. Oh, you are so cute. You call now, and then maybe you'll know what the pecker is in my mouth. Uh, okay, so a little cute. old, maybe 18 plus. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't mean little, yeah. I mean. This is not coming back at this point. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You want her looking right at the lens, or should she be looking at the she camera? Look right, like, like that's the lens. Okay. Pretends that, yeah, okay. look okay. right, right, right <clears throat> at the lens. You the boom guy? Mm-hmm. Okay. No, he well, was. no, uh-huh. no, he's he's he's, oh. he's he's first pecker now. Okay, yeah, he went I'm from the boom, boom guy. Your your <laughs> second oh, right, pecker right. boom. It was really fun working with you. <laughs> okay, call now, because I want your pecker in my mouth. Yeah, and Is what that was good? that? But there was that extra tag. Remember the oh. the, the funny tag? Right. Um. Da, 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 da. Oh. Were we rolling on that? Because that was pretty good. I'm it was pretty again. good, but you weren't fully hard. Again, it yeah. something happens hard. on the camera. Oh, it did? It felt pretty hard. Do you yeah. think, uh, wh- why don't you get him hard, okay. then do the line? <gasps> do we have a fluffer? Is this a union house? No, you can fluff yourself. Because uh, the Grandpa house, <laughs> they had a I'm fluffer. Sure they I'm sure they did. I'm sure they did. And scene. <laughs> scene. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Gina, why don't we bring it home? That would be awesome. I'm <laughs> Gina Grad, and that's the news. That was the news with Gina Grad. Well, you can go to Tucson to the Rialto Theater and see me doing stand up there December 15th. And then we're all heading to the improv December 16th and 17th. And uh, we're doing four live shows there and some stand up there at the. Uh, Improv in Tempe, and then Orny can be found at the Bray Improv coming up December 16th through the 18th, and then off to Jimmy Kimmel's Club. Oh, sell sad. out December 29th and 30th. I need to sell out Brea. Sell out Brea, please. And the special More Than Loud is available wherever uh, on YouTube, right? Yeah. And just all- hit a million. Sorry, just hit a million oh, views. Nice. Congratulations. Yep. Uh, What's Wrong with Orny Adams, the name of the podcast. You can check that out as well. And until next time, it's Adam Carolla for Orny Adams and Gina Grad and Bob Bryan. Say it. Mahalo. Mahalo.